Check, check. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cambridge Hotel and Convention Center for Havoc Fighting Championship. Tonight, Havoc Fighting Championship 14 takes center stage. Tonight's event is sanctioned by the Central Combative Sports Commission, and all fights will be contested under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. Our sponsors, we'd like to thank them to start this fight. Please, ladies and gentlemen, First and Flood Emergency Services, Fire and Flood Emergency Services, Adrenaline Industries, Supplement King, Liquor Hutch, Rayacom, r, r Rentals, Indian Motorcycle, Parkland Sled and ATV, Brit Sutter Sports Medicine Center, and Gasoline Alley Harley Davidson. And last but not least, and they've been with us for a long time, Goliath Snubbing. Let's hear for our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keith Crawford. I'll be your host for this evening's entertainment. And now, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to rock and roll? Please welcome first, in the blue corner, Alex Market. Corner, Pico Senencomb. You know, young rich niggas. You know, so we ain't really never had no old money. We got a whole lot of new money though. <laughs> hey! Raindrop, drop, drop top, drop top, smoking no cooking the hot box. Cookies. Fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Cooking up dope in the crock pot. pot. We came from nothing to something, nigga. Hey. I don't try nobody to grit the trigger. Nobody. Call up the gang and they come and get gang. Cry me a river, give you a tissue. My bitch is bad and bullshit. Bad. Cooking up dope with a oozy. My niggas are savage, ruthless. Savage. We got thudders and hundred rounds, too. Nah. My bitch is bad and bullshit. Bad. Cooking up dope with a oozy. Dude. My niggas are savage, ruthless. Hey. We got thudders and hundred rounds, too. Nah. All set. Woo, 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 woo. Records on records, got backers on backers, I'm riding around in a cool, cool. I take your bitch right from you, you. Bitch, I'm a dog, roof. Hey. Beat down her walls, loose. Hey. Hop in the floor, woo. Scream. I tell that bitch to come, come for me. Come for me. I swear these niggas is under me. Hey. They hating the devil, keep jumping me. Jumping me. Back rows on me, keep me company. Hey, we did the most, most, yeah. Pull up and goes, Ooh. yeah. My diamonds a choker. Ah. Holding up, I with no holster. Bah. Read the ruler, diamond cooler. Cooler. This a roller, not a mula. Hey. Dabbing on them like the usual. Damn. 
Magic with the brick through voodoo. Magic. Court side with a bad bitch. bitch. Then I send the bitch through Uber. Go. I'm young and rich and plus I'm bougie. Hey. I'm not stupid, so I keep the oozy. Yeah. Rockets on records, got back as on back as so my money making my back. Ah. You niggas got a low act rate. Act. We from the north, yeah, that way. No. Fat cookie, blood in the ashtray. Cookie. Two bitches, just national smash that. Hop in the lamb, have a drag race. Smash. I let them birds take a bath, bath. Hey. Raindrop, Trip. drop top, drop top. Smoking on cooking the hot box. Cookie. Fucking on your bitch, yeah, dot, dot, dot. Cooking up dope in the crock pot. pot. We came from nothing to something, nigga. Hey. I don't try nobody to grip the trigger. Nobody. Call up the gang and they come and get gang. Cry me a river, give you a t-shirt. My bitch is bad and bullshit. Bad. Cooking up dope with a oozy. My niggas are savage, ruthless. Savage. We got thudders and hunter rounds, too. Nah. My bitch is bad and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this fight is three five-minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Lightweight Division uh, and is brought to you by Adrenaline Industries. Uh, the man in charge of the action when it starts inside the cage is Mr. Luke Boutin. And now first, introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Calgary, Alberta, representing Aether BJJ. He stands six feet tall. He would in an even 150 pounds. He is making his amateur debut. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. For Alex Marquez. And in the red corner, fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, representing Rashido Edmonton. He stands five foot eight. He would in at 152.6 pounds. He has an amateur record of one win, no losses. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Pico Sanetico. And we've started pulling into the center of the octagon now. Alex Market and Pico Sinokin. As I expected, lots of long strikes happening right away until this distance gets cleared up. Pico with a severe reach advantage, disadvantage. Yeah, I expect Alex to use this reach advantage to his, to his obviously in his favor. Um, he's working it well right now, just working the jab from the outside, which is probably what he should be doing. Pico's still feeling it out. It doesn't look like he's comfortable getting into range yet. First strike landed, and Pico immediately starts going for the takedown, but oh. gives his back in the process. A rear naked choke is partly in, but now it's stripped. We're in full guard. Possible triangle choke set up now. Triangle. Get his arm. Yep. Pico doing the best he can to posture up in this dangerous situation. Alex Market working very hard for this triangle choke early in the first round. Alex trying to cut the angle, cross the arm to make that choke even tighter. Pico really needs to strip that hand off the back of his head to get his posture back. He is deep in this choke. That is it for round number one and fight number one. Your winner by triangle choke, Alex Market, in his amateur debut. What a great start to a career. A very fast, quick grappling exchange starting off with a, a nearly a rear naked choke right off the bat and working his way from close guard, diamond guard, triangle, that's your finish.
You see in the replay where that rear naked choke almost came in during the first grappling exchange. Pico very smartly tried to square up but ended up sinking, sinking his body deep into this triangle choke early where everything is dry. There's no sweat to work with. He keeps getting his posture broken. It was the beginning of the end at this point for a very savvy grappler in Alex Market who just got promoted to purple belt in the octagon. What a great night for Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for these two athletes one more time. <laughs> Referee Luke Boutin steps in at one minute, 50 seconds of the first round. Uh, your winner by triangle choke submission in the blue corner, Alex Marcus. Congratulations to Alex Market. First fight of the night, first submission of the night, first round finish. Look at that triangle again. The angle is so deep at this point. He keeps pulling down on the head. Great move to amplify that choke. It's just a picture perfect triangle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, please welcome uh, to the blue corner, Vincent Pinger. On the number four, two in the 
house is blown up high. Not sure whose will be done. You can call me a sinner for a wondering why. Hey, darling, sleeping on the black top. Hey, darling, running through the track. And in the red corner, Ryan Noble. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is three five-minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Flyweight Division, uh, and it's brought to you by Supplement Kings. Uh, the man in charge of the action when it starts inside the cage is Mr. Andy Social. And now first, in the blue corner representing out of Calgary, Alberta, fighting for five elements, MMA. He stands five foot ten. Uh, he weighed in at 125.2 pounds. He is making his amateur debut. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Pinger. And in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Rashido. Uh, he stands 5'11". Uh, he weighed in at 123.6 pounds. He is making his amateur debut also. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ryan Noble.
Hanger has his timing. He is throwing, but getting countered as he comes in. He has to be careful, caught a big knee. In this amateur fight, we're not allowing knees to the head. Andy Social, our referee, checking the fighters as they go back, heavy to the body immediately for Noble. Hinger hitting hard with an uppercut and then dragged to the ground. But he's stuck in a guillotine choke now. Noble has to check that neck. Hinger's going heavy on that, but he's lost the angle. Noble's doing a good job of using the cage to try to keep that angle at a bad one for the choke. And he's gonna try to strip the grip and get his posture back, pulling his head out, and then start landing damage. He's still in this choke though. The angle just got worse. This is going to be a bit of a gamble on the part of Hinger. He's gonna have to put a lot of muscle into this, hoping that it finishes. And if he doesn't, he's gonna have some sore, weaker arms after that. The guillotine is always one of those moves where you gotta have it, otherwise you're gonna lose something for it. The head is now out. The cage is being heavily pressed against by Noble. Hinger doing his best to control the posture. A possible triangle set up here. Now Noble starting to arch up and start landing damage. This is where he can really start to turn the tide and make a point for himself in this first round. Overhook for Hinger as the 10 second clack goes. Good defense from the ground right now for Hinger. Keeping Noble, uh, his offensive at bay, and that is the end of round number one. Very interesting first round. Heavy, heavy striking for the first half. And then uh, a neutralized ground game. We had a good takedown, which ended up against the cage. Usually a very beneficial uh, situation for the top player, but ended up getting tied up, both in a guillotine as well as an overhook, and uh, both over the arm and the head. Made it very difficult for Noble to get some, the damage off that I think he really wanted to bet on for that takedown. That being said, he was the one in control on the ground, and that does weigh in the minds of the judges. Hinger able to do some serious damage to the nose of Noble. Coming into round two, we'll see if that plays on his cardio. If he can't breathe out of that nose, it's going to cause him to open his mouth, make him more susceptible to knockout shots, as well as just gas him faster in general. I'll tell you one thing, these 125ers, these flyweights are really putting on a show here at Havoc FC. Both corners giving a little bit of advice before the whistle, now it's Coming into round number two. Let's see if they can keep up this pace. That first round's a lot to live up to. They're both smiling at each other. They, they love this. A couple fighters in the, in the cage right now. Neither of them shy to take the center of the cage. Body kick immediately, leg kick followed. Hinger going heavy on the kicks immediately. Wonder if that's what his corner was telling him to do. Now starting to take it high, teep kick, shelling up hard. He might be looking for, for Noble to overcommit to the kick defense and then open up a, a heavy return shot to the head. Leg kick starting to be checked. Still heavy shots being thrown from the corner of Hinger. He's backing his opponent up into the cage but gets countered for it. Stiff jab from Noble, returned by Hinger. Hard calf kick, you can see that one hurt. Over the guard, came with that hook. More to the leg. This is really turning into a Muay Thai clinic here in round number two. Heavy in those legs, you see the redness in the calf of Vincent Hinger really starting to show. That's not good for your lead leg. It's gonna be hard to keep your timing to uh, stay light. He's punishing that leg. We'll see if he starts switching stance to uh, take that target away, because he's getting uh, punished by these kicks coming from Noble. Oh, kick caught. We're into the clinch. Big knee to the body, just misses. And we're separated, back to the center of the cage. Stiff jab still coming out of the corner of Hinger.
Hanger dictating the pace, pushing him backwards. Noble looks to be slowing down at this point, trying to take some breaths. This would be a chance for Hinger to really push forward. And he does, pushing his opponent into the cage. Noble circles out wisely, not getting backed up into a clinch, but catches a big overhand. Lots of backpedaling right now coming from Noble. Okay, Noble moving forward now, coming back to that calf. Looks like he's caught his wind. Now it's his turn to land some punishment. Oh, big overhand from Noble. That checks Hinger. He, he's a little bit wobbly right now. He's playing it off, taking, taking some rest, getting his bit gas back. Great takedown again by Ryan Noble. This is exactly what happened in round number one. Great fighting standing exchange, which ends off the round as we hear the clacks again for Noble again on top, on the ground, giving that little look to the judges at the end of the round, not a bad strategy. I would say Hinger was taking um, a, a little bit less damage from that one, except for that leg. That leg really got punished. Although um, there were some great counter punches from Hinger. Both of these men are taking damage. I would say uh, Noble is a little more damaged to the face and Hinger definitely that lead leg is really taking some punishment. We're down for three three minute rounds in this amateur fight. Both these fighters showing nothing but heart. Great skill. Let's see if their cardio can pay off. This might be the difference maker coming into round number three. So I honestly couldn't tell you where they stand in the scorecards right now. They're very even. Uh, the grappling exchanges being uh, maybe a little more towards the corner of Noble. And that nose isn't getting any better. Again, that could uh, cause cardio difficulties coming into round number three. Teams are being cleared out of the cage. We're set for round number three. Andy Social takes the center of the cage, directing the fighters back to their corners. Both men are still in this. Looks at determination from both sides. Final round has begun. They meet in the center. Immediately starting to pump that jab is Noble. Hinger, a lot of sidestepping. Ooh, catches it in that calf again. There we go, going to the head now is Hinger. This has been the story of the striking. Hinger hitting the head while Noble hits the legs. Oh, big overhand from, from Noble. More legs gets checked, and we're coming in for a shot. Gets it, takes it down. Oh, we could have a back scramble here. Hinger works hard to get his back on the ground to defend that. Working an omoplata now on the wrong leg though, that's the problem. Let's see if he can use it to scramble up. He does not, he ends up on the bottom right now, but at least he has a guard that he can work with. It's open at the moment. He needs to be careful before that gets passed and he ends up in a side controller mount position. You see him just holding the head right now of Ryan Noble, trying to keep him down. Framing now, trying to push away opening up space for either triangle, omoplata, or trying to get up to the feet again where he can uh, continue landing damage. And here he's being controlled, and this is much earlier in the round than it was in first or second. It's gonna be uh, a lot more chance for Hinger to do something on the bottom here. Because to be honest, even though um, Noble forced the top position, he has been on defense ever since he landed there. It's the first hammer strike I've seen since hitting the ground. Very active guard, defensive guard from Vincent Hinger. Now some rabbit punches coming from Noble. That guard is still open. I'm interested to see what 
what Hinger has in mind. He's hitting this strange angled guillotine right now. Noble has his head. Oh, got his posture back. Was being controlled by Hinger. A lot about the guard from the bottom is controlling the space, either opening it or closing it. And honestly, Hinger is doing a great job of that. That's minimizing the damage he takes from the bottom, but also opening up these sort of opportunities to the guillotine choke again. Just like we saw in the first round. Noble's taking the angle away, making it difficult. He's only choking one side of the neck right now. Hinger really needs to use his hips to square up to finish this guillotine choke if this is how he wants to get this fight done. Or he can use it to put a butterfly hook in and get a sweep. Noble does a great job defending that. Gets his head free. This would be the chance to start passing the guard and really start dominating from the top. Landing some last minute damage as we come into the final seconds of round three and that is your fight. What an amazing fight between Josh or Ryan Noble and Vincent Hinger. Fantastic, at 125, both these men show a full arsenal, top and bottom, standing back and forth, hitting the legs, hitting the head. That fight had everything in it. I'm very curious to see how the judges judge that last grappling exchange for the third round. Because clearly that's where most of the round took place, but as I was mentioning, Ryan Noble's on the defensive, even though he was on the top for most of those exchanges. Teams coming in to congratulate the fighters. We're going to get our decision from our announcer, Keith Crawford.
Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Diet Harb scores a fight 30 26. Judge Dave Blockwich scores a fight 29 28. And Judge Luke Boutin scores a fight 30 27 for your winner. By unanimous decision, in the red corner, Ryan Noble. Unanimous decision for Ryan Noble. Interesting that one judge gave it a 26 to 30. That's a 10 8 round. I didn't see Hinger having any uh, rounds that were that lopsided. Very curious to understand what that judge was looking at. That never have tasted a win. The new Lowrider S. Classic look. New roar. Let's just set the gauge on it. It's not totally tight. Yeah. It's only one chop like that. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Patrick Pancha. in the lightweight division for fight number three. Still an amateur fight. Lightweight 155ers, Patrick Padja making the walk. Although I don't know a lot about Patrick, I do know that he holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've seen him at uh, grappling tournaments in the past, so he definitely has a well-rounded game on the ground. We'll see how it works in the MMA arena. If he can make that the dictating factor of this fight against his opponent, Eric Cattleman. Again, fighting out of ether, same as match number one with head coach Chris Maddock in his corner. Very well versed Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Again, if your fighter is a jiu-jitsu fighter, that is always a massive benefit of having that much experience in your corner. Patrick takes the cage. He has much more the ability you would expect from a 155 pound fighter. Our first match had a very long 55 and a very short 55. Now we see that middle body type, that mesomorph body type where he's a little thicker in the legs and the torso can generate a little more power. And I believe that his opponent holds very much the same build, so this could be an interesting battle of wills. Fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta. Eric Kollelman from Team Kensei MMA. This will be his second amateur bout of his career, winning his first one by knockout.
Eric comes up to the referee check station with his coach Kent Brown in his corner. Again, a reservoir of experience. Kent's been in this game for a long time. Lots of MMA fighters have come up under him. Eric is part of the new breed. Lots of power and lots of potential in Eric Cattleman. This young fighter has a great career ahead of him. Continuing it on tonight for his second fight of it against a game Patrick Padja. This may end up being a battle of striker versus grappler, but that being said, Eric Cattleman is no slouch on the ground. I have trained with him a number of times, and he definitely knows how to put that strength and explosive power into good use to keep safe and to come back to the striking where he has been proven to dominate in his previous fight. I'm very excited for this match. By Liquor Hutch. And the man in charge of the action when it starts is Mr. Luke Lutan. And now, first, fighting out of the blue corner, and Calgary, Alberta, representing Aether BJJ. He stands 5 foot 10. He weighed in at 152.6 pounds. He is making his amateur debut, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Patrick Padja. And in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Kensai MMA. He stands five foot nine. He has an amateur record of one win, zero losses. He weighed in at 154.2 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Eric Holdeman. Adelman and Padja ready to square off. Referee Luke Bowden taking the center of the cage and we are begun. Round number one, they touch in the center. Long stance immediately for Padja, being tested here by Hadelman with that kick. Hadelman being backed into the cage, keeping those hands out to check for distance as he launches in with a straight right. Low kicks tested by both fighters. Hodelman seems to be using the backing up to uh, lure his opponent in and launch forward. Short combo met up with a leg kick from Hodelman. Padge is still keeping that long stance, that lead leg. Maybe a target for Hodelman as this fight goes on. Straight right. Undefended and unreturned. Lots of long kicks and immediately jumping in to use the cage to try finish this double leg takedown to take it to the ground where Padja believes he'll have an advantage. Underhooks being used by Hadelman. Now he's posting off of his left arm, trying to get back, using the cage as a wall to walk up. Good wall walking from Hadelman. Underhooks again, sprawling hard, trying to make sure he doesn't end up on the ground again. This is a defining moment in any one of these rounds in this fight, can this be taken to the ground? Can Padgett control from there? Holloman doing everything he can to take away all of these takedown attempts. Both hands are connected now. Heavy double leg takedown coming for Padgett, but he puts him against the cage, allowing Eric to get up on a post. Eric is coming up on that right arm post. Hadelman overhooking the head, posting off the left hand. Trying to set up a Kimura grip now is Hadelman. Keeping Padja honest here, letting him know he isn't the only one with some ground game. Now we're in half guard against the cage. Hadelman trying to use that cage to bridge. Framing off the hips, trying to make space as Padja keeps the heavy pressure down, denying body shots now. That shoulder pressure in the half guard is trying to keep Hadelman square on his shoulders control, on the ground where he is less mobile and less able to get out of this position. 
Now we're back to an open guard situation. Hadleman stands, takes an overhand for it, but we are back standing. Checks the kick, checks the kick again. Let's see if we see another explosion forward. He does, he circles out, back is no longer off the cage. 10 seconds left in round number one. Nobody committing in these last few seconds, and that is round number one for us. Eric Hadleman, Patrick Padgett. Although maybe a minute, minute and a half of that round was spent on the feet, uh, a fair amount of that was defending the takedown off the cage, uh, which eventually did end up getting put together with that big over the shoulder double leg takedown. That's got to weigh in the eyes of the judges. I would say coming into this next round, Hadleman has to look to land heavier, more meaningful strikes. And if he gets to the ground to get up faster or to sweep to the top position where he can take advantage of that ground exchange. Coming into round number two now, this lightweight battle. Corners quickly cleaning up mess in the corner as their teams are being ferried out of the cage for the beginning of round number two. Lots of energy left in these two young men. Nobody looks like they're worse for wear for the first round. Let's see how their second one turns out. Can Hattleman keep it standing? Can Padgett force the ground past the half guard? Immediate heavy leg kicks by Hattleman. And long combos pushing Padgett back into the cage. He's circling to try to get away from that cage. Very nice exchange by Hattleman landing a big overhand right which meant something causing Padgett to have to react by grabbing that single leg, trying to force it against the cage. Tripping now. Hodelman using good balance here to keep on top. Completed by Padgett, but he is out, back to his feet. Lots of energy, lots of strength being put in to finish this takedown. Heavy shots landed by Hattleman in defense. Hattleman trying to sprawl, Padgett pushing forward, trying to catch the hips or the knees. Big hammer fist to the ears from Hattleman, and we're back down on the ground. Butterfly guard for now for Hattleman. Padgett pushing forward, head to face. Hattleman with the feet on the hips, looking to extend, and he does. Back to the feet, but his back is still against the cage. Let's see if he circles back out here. Part of the striking exchanges are being dictated by Padgett's footwork, circling and always pushing Hattleman back into the cage. But, as you can see, that does play to his advantage, or at least his uh, striking style, as Hattleman comes forward with heavy, straight strikes. Leg kicks again. Now Hattleman's coming forward. The first time we see a takedown attempted in the middle of the octagon, and he pushes him all the way back to the cage. Lots of horsepower in the corner of Padja. Completing the double leg, but being framed against immediately. Hattleman trying everything he can to keep the separation here so he doesn't get squished in the corner. Big body shots being landed by Padja while he holds the weight down. There's that hip control and he gets back up to his feet. Same thing he did last time. It's a good strategy by Hattleman that has earned him a way back into the center of the cage on his feet. Being chased down now is Padja. Heavy shot landed, another return. Hattleman is nothing if not accurate from the feet. Cross facing this takedown this time, keeping Padja up high where he can land, knees to the body. If he can circle off the cage and separate, I bet he would have loved to land more of those straight strikes. They were doing great work for him in the mid to late part of the second round. Again, we're going to end this 
rounds with Padja pressuring Hadlin against the corner, but different than the first round, that pressure at the end ended up with a lot of hammer fists to the ears. I'd say Padja is having a much harder time in round two than he did in the first round, completing takedowns, whether that is due to Hadlman learning and adjusting, or to Padja just not having the same horsepower. That's a lot of energy that he's expending on all these takedown attempts. He has to make good on each of those to, to make it worth it, because he can't keep doing that all night. It does play well into the, the judges' scorecards for sure. He's, I would say, winning the, the ground exchange. But it could be a deficit coming into the third round. He still has a full round to try to fight this man who now has been sprawling and brawling him much more efficiently in the second round in Hadleman. Corner applying the end swell to the eye of Padja as his uh, damage is being worn quite obviously on that left side. Teams are cleared out and we begin the final round of this lightweight amateur bout between Eric Hadleman and Patrick Padja. Hadleman dictating the forward pressure this time. Checking the kick. Watching the range and coming in with straight strikes again. Padja is desperate for that takedown. He really wants to take this off the feet. Driving all the way back to the cage. Again, incredible horsepower being shown by Patrick Padja. Underhooks being used by Hadleman trying to force his opponent up off his hips. Picking the chin making it difficult, but the completion is there, catching the hips. And we are now in a one butterfly close guard situation. Wrist control now by Hadleman, stopping the strikes, as well as possibly setting up a triangle or Kimura situation, depending how Padja resists. Forward driving pressure by Padgett, keeping Huddleman on his shoulders. Pass attempt now by Padgett, but he allows Huddleman up to his knees, catching the back position. And Huddleman circles off against the cage, but still getting ducked under by Padgett, who's looking to catch one hook here and work his way to the back. The Kimura grip now being used to defend by Huddleman. If Huddleman can break his grip, and turn towards his opponent, he may put him in immediate submission danger. Kimura grip still in place for Hadleman. This is dangerous for Padja. If he can break that grip and get it behind his back, this is very, very dangerous. Hadleman can also use this to come back up or sweep his opponent over. Both fighters very weary of this position, although the Kimura grip is still in, but Padja passed all the way to full mount. He's much harder to use that grip from here. Born from the championship winning FTR 750 race bike, the new FTR 1200 is here. Flat track style and performance you can put in your garage from America's first motorcycle company.
now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Corey Gower. Corey Gower now takes his place in the cage for this five round title fight for the 155 pound lightweight belt and Havoc fighting championship. His opponent will be veteran fighter Craig Shintani. It should make for a uh, seriously good Komei event here tonight. Corner, Craig Shintani. Both these men well known in the local scene for dominant performances. It's a no brainer that they're fighting for a title tonight. Shintani makes his walk down. Into the referee check position. Although Shintani will be giving up a bit of height in this match, he is uh, well known for spectacular wrestling and takedown ability, where height doesn't really matter when you can close the distance. Let's see if that is the game plan tonight here at Havoc FC. Both fighters have entered the cage. The belt now for the 155 pound division being walked around. This is up for grabs tonight between these two warriors. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the co event of the evening. Uh, this is a title fight and contested over five five minute rounds for the Havoc Lightweight Championship. And it is brought to you by Goliath Snubbing. The man in charge of this championship fight inside the cage is Mr. Andy Social. And now first, introducing fighting out of the blue corner, representing Duncan, British Columbia, and Zuchek, Ultimate Martial Arts. He stands five foot 10. He went in at 154 pounds. He has a professional record of seven wins, six losses. He is the reigning Havoc Bantamweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Gower! And 
Down in the red corner, fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, representing Kingdom uh, MMA. He stands five foot nine. Uh, he weighed in at 153.8 pounds, has a professional record of eight wins, uh, three losses. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Craig uh, Shin Chani. Times. Fight hard, fight fair, touch him up. With those final commands from referee Andy Social, the cage is beginning to be locked and we are gonna start round one of this five round battle for the lightweight championship of Havoc FC. A touch up in the center and immediately Craig Shintani is pushing the pace back towards the cage. Long range right now for Gower. Staying long and circling wide. Shintani pumping and going immediately to that wrestling. Settling down in the half guard. Flattening his opponent's shoulders against the mat where he can start passing and doing damage. You'll see the heavy shoulder pressure from Shintani to isolate the top body while he tries to free the lower body. Overhooks being utilized by Gower to try to stifle any sort of attack. He has to be careful. Elbows, hammer fists can be very devastating from half guard. Shintani still pinning the hips, although starting to be framed against now by Gower. Those forearm frames from Gower are gonna open up space and allow him to get to a more offensive or defensive guard position than his half guard. Now in three quarter mount is Shintani starting to land and he goes to full mount. Gower is, he's covering up, turning the back. Shintani has the back with both hooks, belly down. Shintani's a little high in this mount. Gower's gonna look to try to buck him off the top but Shintani turns it over. Very good move, looking to land some damage and definitely after that neck. Gower doing everything he can to defend those strikes. But he has to be very conscious of this choke. The choke is now set. Shintani is going in on this. That's the tap. Round one finish for Craig Shintani. What a statement. Taking the belt tonight in the lightweight division in less than a round. Fantastic performance. Improving his record to 10 wins now for a lightweight championship at Havoc FC. Well done, Craig Shintani.
For your winner and new Havoc Lightweight Champion, Craig Shintani. Masterful performance tonight by Craig Shintani, your new lightweight champion at Havoc FC. Getting it done in under two minutes. And there wasn't a whole lot of striking involved before he shot in on that uh, double, taking it to the ground, and just technical jiu-jitsu, one step at a time, moving up through the positional chain, starting from half guard, getting to three-quarter mount, full mount, turning the back of his opponent, and then just working those grips, starting to land some strikes until he found that that choke, and once he got it, it was over quick. That short choke, forearm choke, there's not a whole lot you can do when that's in. And that has punched his ticket into the championship realm. Speaking of which, we have our main event coming up in the heavyweight division. Five round title fight between Grayson Wells and Devin Neese. Talk about power punches, this is going to be dynamite. I don't know how this fight's gonna go down, but I would be shocked if someone does not lose their consciousness in under five rounds. These boys fire for the bleachers. As one champion will makes his walk down, Two more fighters will come up to determine the next champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the main event of the evening. Please welcome in the blue corner, Grayson Wells. No stranger to the heavyweight division around these parts, Grayson Wells, the first to make the walk into the Havoc FC cage for our main event in the heavyweight division. Definitely got a large contingent in the crowd for Mr. Wells, who's pulling up to the check station now. This will be again a five round, five minute round title fight for a vacant Havoc FC heavyweight championship. Grayson Wells making his way into the cage. He will be in the blue corner tonight, pacing around, feeling the war territory, where the battle is about to go down. And in the red corner, Devin Mee!
His opponent, Devin Neese, needs no introduction around these parts. A lot of the crowd is out here to see him go for this belt tonight. He's been in this game for over a decade. People are already on their feet, putting a lot of energy behind their guy. Nice makes his walk down towards the cage. Being cornered by Black Dragon Head, Guy Lafontaine. Devin throws heavy, heavy, heavy hands. Do not blink in this fight. We have 25 minutes for one of these men to connect, and that is all it will take. Final fighter entering the cage in our main event. Circling the cage, showing some respect to his opponent, Grayson Wells. The words, good night, tattooed across his chest. No doubt what he's looking for. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. This fight is five five-minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Heavyweight Division and is brought to you by Fire and Flood Emergency Services. The man in charge of this main event tonight is Mr. Luke Boutin. And now first, introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Kelowna, British Columbia, representing Toshino MMA. He stands six foot three. He weighed in at 224.4 pounds. He has a professional record of four wins. Three losses. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Grayson Martial arts. He's doing six foot two. He went in at 222.4 pounds. Having a professional record of six wins. Five losses. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Dylan Instructions in the back, listen to my commands at all times, touch gloves, head back to your corners. Good luck. Final instructions from referee Luke Bowden. We are about to begin our main event at Havoc FC. Grayson Wells against Devin Neese for the heavyweight championship. Love touching the center. Wells backs up. Neese starts plodding forward. Circling as Wells. Big leg kick caught by Wells, immediately down to the ground by Nice. Nice on his back, throwing elbows. Trying to get a high guard now is Nice. Forcing the half guard as Wells, starting to land hammer fists. Nice trying to tie up the arms of Wells. These shots are starting to get through from the closed guard. Grayson driving the head into the chin of Nice, pressuring forward in this close guard that's now open. He backs up, throws the legs aside, and gets to the turtle position. Nice does a great job inverting, but still ends up with Wells on his back. Turtle has one hook in now. Wells is looking to get this back position, starting to land short uppercuts. Oh, being turned in this position, he may lose it if he isn't careful. Posting on that right arm is saving this position right now. If Nice were to pull that out, he could turn towards him and he just misses it. Manages to get that arm and scrambles back to the feet. Does Nice? Knees landed, we're in the clinch. Big elbows. We're slugging early here. Oh, big connection from Nice. 
Wells wore that on his chin. Grayson goes in for a uh, slow double leg. He's a bit stunned right now by the looks of it. Felt the power of Nice now. Starting to back up. Oh, heavy shot landed by Wells, but an eye poke in the meantime. Whoa. What an exchange. This is not good for Grayson Wells. Oddly advantageous for Devin Neese, who took a big shot at the same time and is allowed to rest at this point. The doctor is checking out the eye of Wells. Bleeding all over and writhing in pain. This is not looking good. Doctors looking at the cut that has opened up over the eyelid, the left eyelid of Grayson Wells. Does not appear to be leaking into the eye, but it is a good inch and a half long cut. Checking the vision now. I'm not sure what exactly made that cut, if it was a, a poke or if it was the edge of the glove. There was some sort of connection there that caused it. There's, it's uh, unclear right now if there was uh, illegal technique or movement. It looks like the doctor's taking another look at it, is allowing the fighter up to his feet. And he's going to allow it to continue. One point is being deducted from the corner of Devin Nice. It must have been an illegal technique. I'm guessing a finger poke. But this fight is continuing in round number one. They meet in the center. Again, circling back as well. Big overhand into the chin of Nice. Doubles up on that and ends up in an open guard, half guard situation. Wow, what a, what a start, what a restart to that round. Pinpoint accuracy. Grayson now looking to leave heavy pressure down while Nice is trying to grind away at that cut, using his forearms to try to grind it open. A key lock attempt now from Wells. Oh, big punch is being landed here, bouncing the head of Nice off the ground over and over. More key lock attempts now from Wells. Trying to pin that wrist to the ground so he can get the shoulder lock. Nice doing everything he can to try to keep his posture. Try to get out of this situation. Half guard is not the spot you want to be in the middle of the cage against a heavyweight. More punches being landed. Those are all landing on Devin. Nice is overhooking the arm, trying to keep the striking uh, position out of the situation, turtling up, that's better. He's trying to stop those blows that were landing over and over from before. Again, just pushing the face away, grinding that forearm towards the eye that's cut open. Corner of Wells calling for Kimura's. Elbows to the legs now. You can see that Grayson is still leaking from that eye, but pulls it all the way to full mount and starts landing. Unanswered blows from the mount. Big shots landing down for Grayson Wells. This could be it. The referee steps in. We have a new champion, a new heavyweight champion for Havoc FC, Grayson Wells. What a come from behind win after a crazy start with that big cut. We weren't sure if this fight was even going to continue. He weathered the storm, came back with High accuracy punches to get it back to the ground. Worked his way patiently, landing heavy shots from half guard, forcing the mount, and then just dominant control, dominant strikes coming down to force the referee to stop this in the first round.
Here we'll go to the replay. You see that big right hand that wobbled Nice, but at the same time there was that eye poke that opened up the cut over Grayson Wells' eye. Let's go guys. Come on guys. A very interesting turn of events that could have um, could have changed the outcome here. Were the doctor not so sure about the restart, but we sure are glad he did decide to let Grayson continue as it led him to his championship here tonight. You'll see that takedown into the half guard, landing big shots, elbows, punches, non-stop. Those were landing probably 90% accuracy over and over and over. Through this pressure and striking, he was able to force his way past this half guard. Boom, boom, landing strike after strike. Grinding the forearm into the throat of Nice. Nice doing everything he can to try to stop these blows, but it was just non-stop. Submission attempts here from Wells as well. And there we see the finish here coming from full mount, just over and over, big punches, giant elbows. Nice doing everything he can to stop it, but the referee had seen enough as his head keeps getting just bounced off the canvas. can see from some of these angles on Devin Neese's head, the hematoma on the left forehead, really starting to balloon up. This is what happens when you get two heavyweights in the cage, less than one round. One is bleeding, the other's swollen. A lot of power coming down in any of these strikes. Good show of respect now from the competitors. And they will meet the center of the cage for our official championship announcement from announcer Keith Crawford. One more time! Referee Luke Boutier steps in at three minutes, 45 seconds of the first round for your winner due to TKO. Grayson Wells! <laughs> On behalf of Havoc Fighting Championship, thank you very much for coming tonight. We appreciate your business. Drive safely. We will see you next time.
Cause we've done this before, so you come on in. Make yourself at my home, tell me where you've been. Pour yourself something cold, baby, cheers to this. Sometimes you gotta stay in, and you know where I live. Yeah, you know what we is. Sometimes you gotta stay in. This really set up the whole second round, this guillotine attempt by Levia. He must have felt like he had something there to really buy in the way that he did, even from a half guard. Sometimes you can feel the soft part of the throat on your wrist or forearm, and you know that you have the ability to finish this choke. But you see the angle that Carmichael's really digging his shoulder in towards his opponent, turning his head away from the choke. It really saved him this position, allowed him to strip the grip and then start that top control domination that we saw for the majority of round number two. Entering the final round. Time has been called by the referee. Referee Andy Social He's calling in the doctor to take a look at Livia's eye that was swollen up after round number two. <laughs> doctor doing his due diligence, making sure that the fighter is able to continue without the risk of permanent damage. Nobody wants to see that. The doctor's allowing it. We're gonna see a round number three. Great call by veteran referee Andy Social. But the fighters have been cleared and here we go, round number three. Coming forward right away is Levia. Carmichael landing heavy and backing his opponent up, pushing him against the cage. We're into a clinch brawl right now. Oh, big elbow landed, forearm strike by Carmichael. There must have been some urgency in the corner of Levia, but we have a TKO, a standing TKO. The referee has seen enough. The fighter was not intelligently defending himself. We have our technical knockout start at round number three for Kevin Carmichael. What a great display of martial prowess here in his first official amateur fight. Looked very, very good in there. Heavy strikes the whole time. And um, great dominant ground control as well. There was a couple big shots in that clinch situation that really turned the tide and put Levy on the back foot. One particularly was a forearm strike right to the face against the cage that, that uh, widened the eyes of Levy. You'll see here Carmichael lands a big overhand left, an uppercut, another overhand right. He's teeing off here at this point. Levy is backing up, trying to weather the storm, shelling, returning catching knees in the clinch. Here we'll see that big strike right there. And this is the beginning of the end for Chris Levy in this fight. 
uppercuts, uppercuts, unanswered, undefended. The referee comes in to save the fighter from further unnecessary damage. We'll go to Keith Crawford for our official decision. Gentlemen, our referee Andy Social steps in at 28 seconds of the third round and stops this fight and awards the winner a TKO due to unanswered blows for your winner, Garnet Ladies and gentlemen, in our next fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Mike Parson. We are capping off our amateur portion of the card tonight with a 155 light pound amateur title fight. Mike Parsons will take the cage first against his opponent, Evan Piercy. Mike Parsons representing Team Extreme, who will be the second fighter of that team on the card tonight. Has in their corner uh, an Arashido fighter. Must be doing some cross training.
Coming into the referee's check position for this, our first title fight of the evening. Again, we do have two more title fights coming up in the pro section of the card. Another lightweight title fight, as well as a heavyweight one. But of those three title fights, this will be the first one of the night, the first one that could possibly go five rounds. Mike Parsons is all sorts of hyped coming in here. Short, thick build for Parsons. The opponent tonight, Evan Piercy, fighting out of CMAC of Lethbridge, Alberta, has longtime veteran MMA fighter and coach Lee Main in his corner. Notably thinner, a little taller. Then his opponent, Mike Parsons, they show some respect as he circles the cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this brings us to the first championship fight of the evening. Uh, this fight is five three-minute rounds for the Havoc Amateur Lightweight Championship. And it is brought to you by Parkland Sled and ATV. Uh, the man in charge of this championship fight inside the cage is Mr. Luke Boutin. And now first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Brooks, Alberta, representing Team Extreme uh, MMA. He stands five foot seven. Uh, he went in at 154 pounds, has an amateur record of four wins, uh, two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mike. And in the red corner, fighting out of Lethbridge, Alberta, representing Canadian Martial Arts Center. He went in at 154.8 pounds. He has an amateur record of three wins, uh, two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, that's here for Evan Piercy. Parsons and Piercy slowly pacing the cage, ready for this possibly five round war. As referee Luke Bowden begins the action, round number one, they meet in the center to touch up. Piercy circling early. Parsons circling wide, checking a low kick, just missed. Faking shots right away, keeping his opponent guessing. Still figuring out the range now as Piercy as he pumps a jab. Superman punch attempt by Parsons. Both just feeling each other out right now. Parsons being backed into the cage. He strikes might start landing for Piercy. Here they come, combos and Parsons jumps in on that single leg and runs him right across the cage, backs him into the corner and looks to finish on this hip control right now as he does, peeling him away from the cage. That was a lot of diesel in that takedown. He's staying heavy in the close guard now of Piercy as Piercy is landing heavy shots. Heavy. 
Mike trying to pass the guard of Piercy. Landing in side control, cradle control, full side control. He's got an arm trapped underneath, tries to pass to Mount. Piercy's not having it. Reframing, oh, the sweep by Piercy. Evan Piercy sweeping to the top against the cage now in half guard. Mike Pierce, sorry, Parsons, really trying to keep his back off the cage. Being cross-faced now by Piercy. Some space now being made. Piercy hammer fists. Trying to pass the open guard now of Parsons is Piercy. Parsons jumps on a leg. Trying desperately to set up possibly a heel hook attempt here in round number one. We're coming into the last 10 seconds though. Oh, heavy shots being landed by Piercy from that saddle position. Oh, covering up is Parsons here at the end of round number one. Just shelling up. We're being backed up into the cage. Piercy not letting off the pressure one bit. Parson is shelling up, covering up on the side. He's being hammer fisted on over and over. Big knee to the body and straight hand to the ear. Piercy is, he had finished it. He made the, the statement for himself. No response from Parsons, long enough to let the ref jump in, right the fading seconds of round number one. Wow, what a, what a power show at the end there. Just non-stop pressure and attack by Piercy. Forcing the referee's hand and winning him the amateur title, lightweight Havoc Championship belt. Doctor checking out Mike Parsons, gives him the all clear and we will get to our official championship awarding. For your new amateur lightweight, 155 pound champion, Evan Piercy. Have a championship fighting. Let's hear it for these two warriors. Referee Luke Boutin steps in at two minutes, 59 seconds of the first round. For your winner by TKO due to unanswered blues in the red corner, Evan Piercy. He is now the new Havoc Lightweight Champion. What a night for Evan Piercy winning his championship with literally one second left in round number one. But it might have been one second too long for his opponent, Mike Parsons, who is just taking unanswered punishment for the better part of a full minute. With that, we will end the amateur portion of our card. Coming into the professional MMA portion now with four pro fights two of which title fights here at Havoc FC.
now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, and our first professional fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Austin Petra. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend, my friend, my friend. Classic montage by Bruce Lee as our first professional fighter of the night makes the walk, Austin Batra will be in the blue corner tonight for this lightweight pro fight on the Havoc FC card. Dancing his way down. Coming in with some style. Just remind the viewers at home, now in the professional portion of the card, we will be seeing five minute rounds as well as head kicks, elbows, strikes to the ground allowed. Things get a little more violent on the pro end. Referee doing final checks. That's Austin Batra. Makes his way into the Havoc FC cage. opponent, Sean Nawash, now making his walk down towards the Havoc FC cage. Shadow boxing his way down the walk as he comes up to the referee check position. Nawash could be giving up a few inches to his opponent, Batra. Let's see if that plays into the striking or grappling portion. Both fighters definitely look like they have to cut weight to make 155. They are significantly bigger than you would think for that. This is good. They're taking their fighting career seriously, making the weight. Ladies and gentlemen, this next professional fight is 
three uh, five minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Lightweight Division. And it's presented to you by Brett Sutter Sports Medicine Center. And the man in charge of the action when it starts inside the cage is Mr. Andy Social. And now first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Abbotsford, British Columbia, ready, representing Bisa Martial Arts and Team Mamba. He stands by 11. He went in at 155 pounds even. He is making his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Austin Petra. And in the red corner, fighting out of Calvary, Alberta, representing Cardinal Jiu Jitsu and MMA. He stands 5 foot 10. He went in at 156 pounds. He is also making his pro debut. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Sean. Michael! And we are starting round number one in our first pro fight of the night. Both men, their first professional fight in MMA. Batra checking quickly with that Whoa, with that jab and into the leg kick. Very straight, long, fast punches from Batra. Trying to set up a guillotine to stuff the shot. We're circling back, pushing his opponent up against the cage. Oh, Michael's taking a heavy shot there. Big elbows in the standing position from Batra as he picks up the single and lets it go back to the strikes. This is a nonstop barrage. Batra has no speed that isn't 100%. He's hitting the gas hard in this first round, looking to finish it early. Getting checked with an uppercut by Michaels. And now Michaels back in the center of the cage, taking one twos. Spinning back fist attempt by Michaels. Botcher slowing it down a little bit now, inside leg kick, backing his opponent against the cage. Michael's looking to force it back into the open ground. Checking the range. These little feeler jabs. Looks like Botcher is trying to get his win back after that big opening. Took one right to the jaw. Oh, takes Michael down with a bit of a slip from that double leg. And he's landing quick, heavy barrages from the top position here in an open guard. Overhook from Michaels trying to stop this non-stop punching. Big elbows coming down from Batra. We're in open guard situation, going on an arm bar now. Not quite there, the elbow is out from the hips. Batra doing everything to try to back up from this position, you can see it on his face. He's sinking in deeper though. Slam now onto the head of Michaels. Batra still in danger. That arm might get extended here. He's bellying down on it. This is a deep arm bar. It's over. The referee has stopped it. The elbow was popped. What a tight arm bar. Andy Social, our referee, steps in to save our fighter's arm as it hyperextended. And that's what it's for. That's why we practice. These things are no joke. They're meant to break the body, and break it, it did. Weathering an incredibly harsh storm right off the bat, did Michaels coming back in defense from the bottom with an offensive arm bar, chasing it down, even being slammed in that position, but not letting go. His coach, Brad Cardinal, BJJ Black Belt, congratulating his fighter coming over to his opponent's corner to give him some respect. Just a great show of technical jujitsu against all odds being really hammered down in that first round by a super offensive Austin Batra. That's our first joint lock submission of the night. Fighters meeting in the center of the cage to show some respect. You can see here the slam in the replay. Missed the head of his opponent, kind of slammed him down on his shoulder, didn't do a whole lot of damage, but ended up sort of pushing his arm a little deeper into the hip zone here. Now you'll watch, the real damage comes when, when Michaels goes to belly down on this, so really put down gravity through his hips onto that elbow. 
And I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but definitely from my uh, commentator's position, you can see that elbow pop badly. Here's the position here. You can see the pop in the arm. Andy Social had seen enough. Referee stops for the safety of the fighter. We're going to get our official announcement from announcer Keith Crawford. of the first round for your winner due to a verbal tap out with an arm bar, Sean Michaels. from the championship winning FTR 750 race bike, the new FTR 1200 is here. Flat track style and performance you can put in your garage from America's first motorcycle company. Draw it. Dun, dun, dun. The number is 0657854. Do we have a winner? Now, do you want to know what you won? $2,733, come on up here. Um, and this is for, again, Sylvan Lake Community Partners. It's a nonprofit social service that helps people in need. So thank you guys so much. You've helped tons of people in need tonight.
Give yourselves a hand. If you need to go to the washroom, now's the time. Run on out super fast. You have like a minute before we keep going. Okay, you actually have like two minutes, and in that time, you need to go check out the booths. So just a reminder, you've got Herx Nutrition at the front door. They've got games and prizes over there and awesome apparel. Um, Jacked over there as well. They also have great apparel. They're locally owned. Um, Home of Hope, uh, local nonprofit organization. They have Fight for a Child apparel and sponsor kits. Um, and Mortal Kombat Fight Shop in the back. Uh, they have a $400 gift basket and 10% off everything, and they are also locally owned. So get out, support local, check them out, and we're going to keep going in a couple minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in the next final evening, please welcome to the blue corner, Harley King. After that short break, we're kicking the action back off with Harley King. This is going to be a 135-pound pro fight. His opponent is going to be a local black belt, Ryan Williams. Harley King representing Hayabusa Training Center under head coach Luke Harris. Very talented judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt as well as MMA veteran. This is the first and only bantamweight fight of the evening and will be our last fight before we get into our final two fights, which are title fights each. One thing's for sure, these smaller competitors really bring the action. Expect this to be a very fast-paced battle at Bantamweight, 135. His opponent, local man, Ryan Williams, coming in to represent ATC, Arashido Red Deer. Again, as previously mentioned, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, the first of which from Red Deer. Looking to come back after a hard loss in his last professional fight. It's been a while since that fight, and I'm sure he's looking to make a statement to wipe that, uh, that mark off of his career. The crowd coming up behind their hometown guy. Head coach Gary Vig walking his fighter out to the check station. Williams saying one last prayer before stepping into the Havoc FC cage. Serious look in his face of determination. He is all in for this one, showing some respect to his opponent, Harley King. He stands five foot seven. He went in at 134.8 pounds. 
He is making his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Harley King. And his opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Arashido. He stands five foot eight. He went in at 134.2 pounds. He has a professional record of one win, one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Williams. Williams with the crowd behind him here. As the cage is locked and referee Luke Bowden will begin this bantamweight fight. Ryan quick to the center, throwing a high kick, checking with the jab. King playing it cautiously, coming forward with that lead leg wide, which is met by Williams' low kick, another high kick. Kick heavy in the first round here so far by Ryan Williams. Oh, big slap off that leg kick. Inside one goes low. Oh, this is not good. Very early in this fight to be taking a heavy shot to the groin. Although you can see that the uh, proper leg kicks are already showing red welts on the outside of the lead leg of King. This corner is suggesting that his fighter takes some more time. That was a bad shot. You definitely don't want this to affect the fight if at all possible. So he has up to five minutes to try to recover from this. The referee telling Williams to watch those kicks. That'll be a warning. All right, Harley King saying he's good to go and they meet back in the center of the cage. Another outside kick by Williams. Ooh, sidekick from Williams. More kicks than punches at this point, although he does land a jab and then a high kick. This could be the strategy. Kick low until he expects it low, then go high. King starting to plod forward, pushing a jab out there. Williams still heavy into that leg. That lead leg is taking significant damage inside and out. It is just turning cherry red. Looks like King is, is changing the levels here, trying to get a different look. Be curious to see if he turns this into a wrestling situation. Williams very light on his feet here, pushing jabs out there. Oh, big hook. Catches the kick, does Williams. Goes in, gets reversed against the cage, but gets back to his feet. He's now pushing King against the cage. Head right under the chin, good head placement. Pressuring his opponent up. King using that leg to check for the takedown. We've got a body lock still here by Williams, trying to bend his opponent down towards the ground, finding his hips. Catching some elbows for his troubles. Being lifted up. Now Williams has it down to the ground. Heavy pressure, trying not to give his back as he comes up towards the cage. King uses that cage to wall walk back to a safe position. The overhook really helping in this position for King to not get his back taken. If that isn't there, you can be sure that Williams wants to get to that back as soon as possible. Stomps now from Williams in the corner. That head positioning still causing uh, havoc up in Williams. I'm sorry, King's posture, although William is now leaking out of the side of his head from those elbows, he definitely took some damage. We'll see if King starts coming back to that. This is something that played into the uh, previous loss that Ryan Williams had was elbows to the head. We'll see if that uh, gets into the mindset here now. If he starts turning it up or turning it down due to that. Really trying to get under the hips of his opponent is Williams. This is a lot of work. Double underhook saves that position for King. Catches an uh, uppercut on the break. Williams checking the blood. But he's back to the center. Throwing heavy leather. 
Another big pump jab. Inside leg kick. Now King's trying to return those kicks, but getting attacked up top. Overhand by Williams. 2-3 combo. Trying to catch the kick as Williams pushing it back into the cage. Going again to those hips, but getting double underhooked again. Williams really pushing against the cage. King trying to reverse that position as best he can. Oh, bit of a knee here in the clinch. Deep on that single again is Williams. Here come those elbow strikes again. Those worked well for King previously. It's to the same side of the head too. Okay, King has managed to circle around. Almost looks like he caught another low blow there to a, with a knee. Yep, he did. He's going to get separated again. This could end up getting a point deducted. We'll see what the referee does here. Two in one round. Obviously, neither of those intentional, but the referee does have to make a decision. See the blood running down the head of Williams as he rests in his corner, waiting for the decision from the ref. And we're restarting back. I'm not sure if that was a point taken away or not. If it was, there's a possibility for a draw round. Although King's starting to make a statement for himself, coming in heavy with the strikes, pushing Williams up against the cage and coming in thick on the body. Palm strikes being returned by Williams. Oh, big overhand elbow for King. That stunned him. Oh, big return head kick from Williams. Damage coming in from that hook. King may have stunned Williams near the end of the round here. We heard the clacks. Big heavy elbows from half guard. Williams doing everything he can to survive and he does. Wow, that round really turned around after that uh, last separation for the late knee to the groin. Before that, it was all Williams. At least he was the, uh, the one in the dominant position primarily. And then once they re-upped in the center after that rest, boy, King came in heavy. Big jumping, flying attacks, pushing him into the cage, ending up taking it down after a failed shot by Williams to, to stifle those blows. Wound up being reversed down to the bottom side control, I'm sorry, uh, half guard position and catching just heavy elbows, bouncing his head off the ground. We'll see how much Williams comes back in this second round cognitively because he was uh, being rattled badly at the end there. I don't know if a minute's enough. We'll find out. You see lots of work on the replay being done by Williams. Both men put a lot of effort into that first round, but I'd say the damage advantage definitely has to go to King. Here we go, round two. Williams comes out quick, takes the center. Some urgency in the face of Williams. King plodding in. Catching more leg kicks. He's starting to check really high for those. He doesn't like catching them in the quad. Those are swelling up for sure. Little jab. Oh, big uppercut coming for King. Williams uses that to get the body lock, and we're back against the cage. Underhooks now being forced by King, and we've circled back. Now King has the pressure pushing on Williams. See if he uses this to break or to use it for a takedown. Oh, he attempts a spinning back elbow. That, that was a good move. Just narrowly missing Williams. Williams takes the center, another body kick. Exchanging jabs. More leg kicks. Williams punching that, pushing that jab. Connects on King. Oh, rage being found by both opponents as they're landing to the head over and over. 
don't know if that was a slip or a connection, but we've got a single leg attempt by Williams taking more elbows by King. Up against the cage in front of my commentary position. Williams trying hard to break down the posture of King. Pressuring now is Williams pushing King's back against the cage. And reversed by King. Oh, big knee to the head of Williams. That was a massive knee. Hammer fists now in that single leg position. Lots of damage being landed by King. The referee's being very careful to watch this to make sure that Williams is still in it. Cross face now. Williams is definitely still in it. He's given it everything he's got here, going to wrist control. Stomping the feet. Trying to connect his hands to finish this takedown. The underhook is saving King from being able to be taken down here. Oh, but changing the angle does Ryan. And Williams now has the top and close guard. He's worked hard to get here. Let's see what he can do. King is trying hard to get his feet to the hips of Williams where he can elevate and separate. And he does, but gets taken back down. And now Williams has a bit of a body lock situation here. The referee is stopping it for a mouthpiece. And resuming the fight. Pushing heavy now as Williams into the, the hips of King. King's back to his feet using that wall walk, took an elbow to the face, but is now in a better position to defend himself. Using that underhook, trying to turn it again as he has in the past. Williams going down low to the feet now to try to find maybe an ankle pick to trip this down to the ground. Oh, giant knee to Williams. That might have uh, rocked him badly there. I thought he was out for a second, but he's not. My goodness, he's taken two gigantic knees when he's going for those, those low singles. Lots of hammer fists here. Oh, non-stop damage. The referee is taking a close look at this in round number two. Unanswered blows being landed by King. Big elbows. This could be the end of it. Williams shelling up from here, defending those blows as best he can. Using his guard. Missed that big elbow, that could have been a big one. Those punches are starting to break through. Williams turning away, he's tapping. That's a tap to strikes. What a horrendous beat down at the end of round number two. The referee saw enough um, defense not to stop it, but Williams had had enough especially from those two gigantic knees earlier in the fights. That was a, probably a veteran move there to save his brain. That is a lot of damage he is being taken. Unanswered elbows over and over and over from the half guard. Great performance in the second round here by Harley King. Doctor is checking out Williams as he gets back up. And that will be our second TKO of the evening here at Havoc FC. By way of Harley King in round number two. This bantamweight fight has come to an end and we will get our official announcement in a moment. Looking at this replay, you can see Williams was coming in very well with the striking, but would catch every now and again, catch a heavy blow that would cause him to uh, force that takedown. And this is where the fight really changed is in these takedown exchanges as Williams tried desperately to get it to the ground successfully from time to time, but would take damage every time he did. And that piled up to the point at the end there where it just the takedown wasn't happening and the damage was getting too much that he would uh, eventually have to tap out due to blows. Look at these heavy, heavy shots. These are not nothing shots. These count. That is really rocking. And that was the end right there. 
actually that was the end of round number one. Wow, yeah, he took damage uh, in both of those rounds significantly. The crowd cheering now as Williams comes to his feet. But you can see from this replay over and over, hammer fist, elbows, hammer fist, elbows. Big knees that dropped Williams twice in this fight. And there's the tap out in the replay. Here we'll get our official announcement of the winner from Keith Crawford. Ladies and gentlemen, these are warriors inside this cage. Let's hear it for them one more time. Referee Luke Mutia steps in at four minutes of the second round and stops this fight and awards a TKO due to unanswered blows for the winner in the blue corner, Harley King. And it's broken. Pageant now in a grapevine, full mount position, away from the cage, chest to face, lots of pressure here. Unfortunately, being an amateur fight, there's no strikes allowed to the head on the ground. So this is going to be a pure grappling exchange with maybe a little bit of body shots. Really making Hattleman carry the weight is Pageant. Hattleman pushing that mount low over his hips. He may be able to shrimp his way back to a guard position. Very nice, framed off the hips and with the feet again, back to the feet. Here we are, pushing back against the cage, immediately trying to shoot for Padja, blocked by Hattleman. Here come the shots, big uppercut, big overhand. What a conclusion. We're gonna have to go to the judges for that one. I was so into that fight, I didn't even hear the 10 second clack. This did end up turning into a war of styles between Hodelman's superior stand up and Padge's superior pressure and takedowns. Quite impressed with Patrick Padge's takedown uh, drive. He, he never gave up on any of those shots. He made sure if he was going under, he was going to give everything he had to complete those, and he completed quite a few. Decision is incoming from the judges, but just a fantastic show for these amateur fighters. Here in our third fight of the evening at Havoc FC, Again, Drew Weatherhead with you here, calling all the action at cage side. We're gonna go to our announcer, Keith Crawford, for the official decision.
Great show of sportsmanship in the corners while we await our official decision. Patrick coming over to shake the hand of his opponent, Eric Hattleman. And the judges are completing their scorecards. We are soon to have our decision. Another three round battle. You really saw everything there was in MMA in that one, both in the striking department, top, bottom, hitting leg kicks, hitting lots of heavy overhands, even an uppercut at the end. Lots of wrestling, wrestling defense, work on the cage, both up and down. Ground and pound, positional changes. For a nine minute fight, that was a lot of action. Hometown crowd giving it up for their hometown boy. The judge is taking their time with its decision. I'm, I'm curious to see What's going on in their heads right now? It may not be a very straightforward decision. Fighters now being called to the center for our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for these two warriors. Judge Ziad Harb scores a fight 29-28. Padja. Judge Andy Soso scores a fight 30-27. Holdeman. And Judge David Bilisakoic scores a fight 29-28 for your winner by split decision. In the blue corner, Patrick Padja. Pat Patrick Padja getting the nod from the judges. and taking his first win of his amateur career. First loss in the corner of Hattleman, but split decision loss. Great fight, lots to learn from that. No shame in it. Padge is absolutely thrilled taking that split decision win. Looked surprised when he heard that he had lost in one judge's eyes 30-27. And that marks the second win of the night for Ether MMA. Born from the championship winning FTR 750 race bike, the new FTR 1200 is here. Flat track style and performance you can put in your garage. From America's first motorcycle company. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in the blue corner, Stephen uh, 
Soy Brick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where the fuck should I really even start? I got hoes that I'm keeping in the dark. I got my niggas cross the street living large. Thinking back to the fact that they dead, thought my raps wasn't facts, so they sat with the bars. I got two phones, one need a charge. Yeah, they twins, I could tell they ass apart. I got big packs coming on the way. I got big stacks coming out to save. I got Lil Max with me, he the way. It's a big gap between us and the game. In the next life, I'm trying to stay paid. When I die, I put my money in the grave. When I die, I put my money in the grave. I really got to put a couple niggas in a place. Really just lapped every nigga in a race. I really might check this nigga on my face. Lil CC, let it slap with the bass. I used to save hoes with a mask and a cave. Now I'm like, nah, love, I'm good, go away. Ain't about to die with no money. We've only got two fights tonight on the card that are anything over 160 pounds. This is your first one. Middleweight, 185 pounders are going to be throwing heavier leather than the rest of these fighters that have entered the cage so far. Little more uh, possibility for the knockout coming into this match. And then later tonight, we have our main event heavyweight battle title fight between Grayson Wells and Devin Neese and you can bet there's going to be explosive fireworks in that one. But the middleweights coming to fight in the fifth amateur fight of the night. Excuse me, fourth amateur fight. And I'm sure that they would like to make that statement first. Steven Cybrek takes the cage. First fighter from Ascendant tonight. Barons. Going to be matched up against his opponent, Grady Barons. Making the walk is Grady Barons. Coming out of Arashido Sylvan Lake. With Coach Ken Sumner in the corner, putting the mouthpiece in his fighter. Barons now taking the cage. We're going to make this our first official 185 fight of the night. Steven Seibrick versus Brady Barons. Introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Brandon, Manitoba, representing Queen City Martial Arts. He stands six foot one. Uh, he weighed in at one hundred eighty-six point six pounds. He has an amateur record of one win, uh, two losses. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Stephen uh, Cybre. And in the red corner, fighting out of Sylvan Lake, Alberta, representing a Rashido. Uh, he stands six foot two. Uh, he went in at 182 pounds, has an unblemished amateur record with two wins, uh, zero losses. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Greedy Burns! ground but being walked all around right now by Cybrick. Already hit heavily to the leg and heavily to the head being shown the whole game but being returned on now. Baron pressuring forward. Straight shots by Cybrick meeting in the center. Although Baron is taking the center of the cage it seems that Cybrick is allowing him to counter fight and really landing heavy straights. Lots of damage. Uppercuts. Overhand. Cybrick is doing serious damage early. We're not even a minute into the first round, and we've got a lot of damage happening. In unintentional headbutt there in the clash, and maybe lock up bodies and heading towards the cage. Cybrick and Baring right in front of my announcer position, landing heavy knees to the legs. His body lock really pressuring forward on Baring. Trying to turn this into a headlock position with no success. Bent backwards now is Baron by Cybrick. Knees being exchanged back and forth between these fighters. Underhook now being dug deep by Baron to try to get some control and maybe turn this off the cage. Being punished for that by Cybrick. Cybrick still maintaining this double under body control. Trying to turn it into a sacrifice throw and he completes it. Right into side control. This is a giant turn of advance for Cybrick. Cybrick keeping some heavy shoulder pressure, being shrimped now back into half guard. Baron quickly taking it back to a full guard position. Very impressive jujitsu from Baron on the bottom, trying to get it to a defensive position instead of that side control where he was being controlled. Body shot heavy now from Cybrick. Lots of power being pushed forward, crushing his opponent's guard open. Armbar attempt by Baron. I don't think that the elbow is in place here. He's going to hold this for as long as he can. Probably try to scramble out as Cybrick is going to break this grip and take the top. And he does. In a reverse mount now is Cybrick. He needs to decide how he's going to turn around and start attacking. I don't know if there's going to be any leg locking involved here. Probably going to see some, yep. Oh, crab ride now. Interesting back take attempt from Baron. If he extends his legs, he can potentially take his opponents back, making a big statement in the end of the first round for what was uh, a losing first minute. Underhook, and we're turned back to a close guard, a triangle position started, and that's the end of the round. Wow. Well, I would say that uh, both cards from both corners have been tilted now. Seabrick with a significant powerful striking advantage, especially that leg kick right off the bat. That was a very impressive, highly technical leg kick. Tons of power behind that. I would not want to catch that more than once a fight. Whereas when Baron got to the ground, um, even though it was against his will, he quickly shrimped back into a defensive position where he started attacking with that arm bar. Um, even though he lost that, it uh, ended the round shrimping back towards a uh, diamond guard or triangle choke attempt. So definitely there are pitfalls and dangers for Seabrick if he ends up on the ground um, for too long against Baron. He's got answers from the bottom. <laughs> Seabrick getting some last water and advice from his corner as is Baron, and Baron, quite honestly, does not look worse for wear for how much damage he took in that first round. He looks all there. Uh, hopefully that is the case for his sake coming into round number two because he definitely got unloaded on more than once in the standing portion of round number one. 
All right, both teams are being cleared out of the cage, and we're going to start round number two. Very curious to see how the strategies have changed coming in now that we know uh, which fighter wants what. We center up, touch gloves. Oh, quick exchange quickly by Baring, wanting to set the pace, hitting the body, getting returned on by Cybrick. Straight left, that was right down the pipe, snapping the head back of Baron. Baron seems to have the range figured out immediately. Slipping heavy leg kick again. Another leg kick. Baron can't take a lot of those. Another left, landed. Heavy, quick, short shovel hook by Sabrick. Snapping the head back at will right now. We are clinching up now, pushing back against the cage. This time it's Baron forcing it to the cage. Very good tactical move, although the hip's being pushed in by Seabrick. Threatening the takedown. Oh, we're going right to a standing guillotine attempt now by Baron, whose nose is freely leaking onto the back of his opponent. This is an arm in guillotine. It's gonna be more difficult to finish than the arm out, and particularly being crushed backwards against the cage right here. Although it looks like his opponent is carrying a lot more weight, it, it is tiring for Baron in this position to try to hold that. And it's very difficult to get a proper angle where, where he needs to get higher up on the head. Now if Baron were to fall back on that guillotine and really uh, commit to it, he could do that. Although, again, he's taken um, a lot of damage and might just use this for control. Seabrick trying desperately to turn this into a back duck under and switches over into another sacrifice throw back to side control very reminiscent of round number one heavy shoulder pressure now from from Sabrick not wanting to lose his position but we're getting regarded on immediately by Baron very good defense and now this is actually a position in amateur MMA where he is better off when it comes to taking damage you can't take strikes on the ground to the head here it's going to be mostly jujitsu a good little sweep coming up top now. Back into the single leg, although we have a deep guillotine now. Baron has this much, much deeper than he did in the corner. This is right on the throat. Very serious danger now. Baron can lean into this and get the finish. He needs to lock up his guard to get proper torque. A arm is out now. This is much, much more powerful than the arm and guillotine. Serious danger now for Seabrick. If he can keep that guard open, he has a chance. The guard's getting closed. This is where it's very, very difficult to, to defend. And we're forcing the tap, that is it. What a come from behind victory for Baron. Fantastic use of jujitsu, overcoming significant odds in the stand up, getting drugged down by another sacrifice throw, having to shrimp back into a closed guard position and catching that neck just in the scramble in a way that really, really amplified that choking pressure. He worked very, diff, uh, very hard to, to uh, improve that choke, making it what it was to get that finish. And you can see he's limping pretty hard on that leg that took so many of those heavy leg kicks. Wow. Incredible show of heart and incredible show of skill from his opponent, Steven Sabrick. Awesome middleweight fight. And a come from behind victory for Grady Barons. He's going to be happy to get an ice bath after uh, this one. That leg is going to swell up badly. Our second finish tonight coming by way of choke. First one by triangle. This one now by arm out guillotine. Here we see the standing guillotine in the replay. Again, very difficult to finish from this position. It's mostly a control. And here Seabrick is gonna use this as a sacrifice throw, forcing the side control. Very, very smart move right there. You see all the blood on the back of Seabrick from the damage he landed standing. And here he pushes heavy down shoulder to neck pressure. He did not want to lose his position, but 
Brady shrimps his hips out and gets that bottom knee in to force that, that guard again. And here we see as he scrambled back up to his feet, catching the neck properly this time. Seabrook tried so hard to change the position to get away from this choke. If he could have ended in side control, he could have uh, defended that much easier. Brady very uh, wily keeps it in the guard and finds his finish. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for these two athletes one more time. Referee Andy Social steps in at two minutes, 48 seconds of the second round. For your winner, due to tap out, due to guillotine choke, in the red corner, Greedy Burns. I shake off or get out of my temple. Right after daddy, go back to his kettle. One vodka and drink it all up to these mess. I have no issue. I am official. Let them come at me. I practice jujitsu. Only fit two things with three letters, dog. There's G O D dog and my fucking initials. Uh -huh. Doctors called up to the news to report to them what they discovered. What they discovered. Said I'm the first of a species that they call a real motherfucker. Kells. And I'm sorry if you get a lot of pitch from my followers. If you acknowledge us in any other way, the positive. But you shouldn't be hiding and talking about Superman when you live in the metropolis. Woo. And if you follow astronomy, you're my... Ladies and gentlemen, a quick announcement, sorry to bother you. Whoever has a car, license plate number CFF2931. If you could go, please move your car because someone needs to go to the hospital. I'm gonna repeat it one more time. CFF2931. Please move your car if you don't mind. Somebody needs to move their car behind your car. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, please welcome, uh, in the blue corner, Jesus Rico. Jesus Rico making his way down in our fifth amateur fight of the night, a catch weight of 150 pounds, 150 pounds for this fight against his opponent, the hometown boy, Sean Carroll. his way to the referee check position. The 150 pound catch weight is interesting because he does look like he would be a 145er naturally. Not walking weight, but it would be his, his proper fighting weight. I'm curious um, why the catch weight this time.
Jesus, Jesus Rico taking the cage. Will be in the blue corner tonight. And in the red corner, Sean Carroll. Sean Carroll, returning fighter to Havoc XC. Very popular hometown fighter. Fighting out of Kensei MMA. He is a, a longer fighter for his size at 150. And really has a whole package when it comes to MMA. He is uh, coming out of a primarily striking gym. His striking is very well versed, but has submission finishes as well as uh, grappling tournament experience. Which you really have to do to round yourself out. Even at the amateur level these days, a lot of fighters are coming in as complete fighters. If you come in as a specialist, you're always leaving that hole in your game that your opponent may A, see coming in, or B, figure out quickly into the round. <laughs> quickly making the walk now is Sean Carroll coming to the check-in station out of ATC, Arashido Red Deer. I'm sorry, I said Kensei before. This is an Arashido fighter. But I stand by my remarks when it comes to his style. He has sound striking and very good grappling as well. A complete fighter coming in to fight against Jesus Rico in this catchweight 150, 150 pound matchup. <laughs> Sean talking to the camera. Seems to be in good spirits here. Fight night is what he trains for. He is ready for this. He's waited all year. Swagging his way into the cage is Sean Carroll. In the red corner tonight, again representing a Rashido ATC MMA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is three three-minute rounds at a Havoc Fighting Championship catch weight of 150 pounds and is brought to you by R&R &R Rentals. And the man in charge of the action when it starts inside the cage is Mr. Luke. Bhutan. And now first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Medicine Hat, Alberta, and fighting for Team Extreme, he stands uh, six feet tall. He went in at 150.4 pounds, has an amateur record of zero wins, uh, one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for Jesus Rico. And in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Rashido. He stands six feet tall. He went in at 151.4 pounds, has an amateur record of one win, one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for Sean Black Sheep Carroll. Fighters seem to be agreeing to touch in the middle. Referee Luke Bowden ready to get this action started in round number one. Sean immediately takes the center and starts pushing Rico back. Rico with a long left hand out there, checks the leg kick immediately. Getting a range figured out here. Carroll very calm, very smooth, very calm, starting in with a leg kick. That one sunk in pretty deep into the quadru quadricep. Rico coming in wild, big overhand. Carroll teeping, pushing his Opponent back into the cage. Rico trying to push his way back away from the cage. Carroll not having it. He's keeping that center pressure. Cage control, hand, hand, uh, landing a very nice leg kick on the step in as Rico tried to come in for a combo. That really hurts when you plant your weight and then catch a leg kick for it. Big, nice counter shot by Carroll. Coming in with a straight and still maintaining the center of the cage. 
striking being dictated by Carroll, as well as the range. Rico trying to use these blitz attacks to get his back off the cage and really try to uh, open up the striking. Neither fighter looking for the takedowns yet. They're both still feeling this out in round number one. Big teep kick again by the longer Sean Carroll. Oh, takes one over the top by Rico. Jesus coming in with combinations now as his corner is calling for it. Carroll pushes him back into the corner again. Very nice timing on that. Back to the leg kicks. Carroll blocking as the combos come in from Rico. Carroll now pushing him back into the cage. Overhand right. To the body now, Carroll. Oh, good counter left hook by Carroll as Rico tries to take his back off the cage again. Being trapped on the cage both by the footwork and the counter striking of Carroll. This is a very good striking clinic when it comes to control of your opponent. Long overhand by Carroll. Leg kick. And Rico is being pushed back again. Rico coming in overhands, combos, but then backing up as Carroll pushes back to the center. Uppercut attempt by Carroll, coming down to the last 10 seconds of round number one. Rico with his back against the cage. Comes rushing forward, pushing almost the entire length of the cage. And that's the end of round number one. Not a whole lot of significant damage landed, although I would say that the significant strikes landed are uh, well in the corner of Sean Carroll. A good kind of feeling out round for both fighter. Neither one overly committing to their strategy. But also not uh, getting much benefit for it. As there won't be a whole lot of damage following them back into round number two. Although we will see if the cardio plays a factor here. As we were mentioning before, this is a catch weight bout at 160. I'm sorry, 150, which is curious. Uh, that means either A, uh, somebody couldn't make the weight of 145, or uh, B, it's uh, had just not good at, at cutting. You know, didn't, didn't want to threaten that and uh, have their cardio affected. So we may see some sort of cardio effect coming into round number two, whether or not there was a significant weight cut. Teams are leaving the cage now as we get set for round number two. Early show of sportsmanship in the center of the cage by Carol and Rico. Both fighters looking light on their feet, ready for round number two. This catchweight 150 pound fight. Glove touch by Carol and Rico. And we're back to the same thing. Rico being pushed to the edge of the cage and Carol demanding the center. This isn't always a bad thing. If you're in Rico's camp, uh, you could walk somebody into a counter striking situation. But it always weighs heavily on the minds of the judges when it comes to cage control, who's dictating where the fight takes place on the feet, which would definitely be Carroll in this situation. So you really got to take advantage of those counter striking situations if you're Rico. Rico backing straight up, almost catching a teep kick, coming in with combos, but getting countered by Carroll being pushed back. That left hook definitely connected, leg kick by Carroll. Carroll light on his feet. Oh, coming in for a single, turning it into a double leg takedown, pushing all the way across the cage to complete it. Rico was thinking about a guillotine for a second, but didn't quite have the neck. Carroll staying heavy on those legs. He needs to drag his opponent back from the cage so he can't wall walk back up. If he can grab his hips and pull him back, he can do that as he does. 
one inch at a time, trying to drag his opponent away from the cage as Rico does the exact opposite, posting and trying to get up. But now Carroll has flattened him to his back and starts to land rabbit punches to the body. The guard now closed by Jesus Rico, but being stuffed and stacked against the cage here, Carroll is uh, able to use a lot more pressure as he can push him against a barrier. It makes it much harder for these attacks by Rico too because he's being compressed into a little ball. He can't really extend when he needs to. The guard now is open of Jesus Rico. Carroll just stuffing this, keeping heavy pressure, keeping his opponent on the back, on his back. Let's see if we see some passing attempt here from Sean Carroll. Get some uh, offensive jiu-jitsu from the top. As right now, Rico is definitely being uh, honest about his situation. He's trying hard to get up. He's trying hard to keep active. Carroll doing a good job of just stifling and nullifying all of these attempts. As an armbar slowly attempted by Rico gets framed out by Carroll. Carroll really taking advantage of the cage in this fight when it comes to the ground. It's a good strategy. He's posturing up now. Big shot to the liver. The guard now is open to a single butterfly, butterfly by Rico. Here comes Carroll heavy to the body on both sides, landing heavily at the end of the second round. That was a dominant, dominant second round by Carroll, both in the stand-up and then eventually being forced to the ground and really just stifling the, everything from the ground from that guard position. Again, though, not a tremendous amount of damage in either party, so I don't think that is going to um, play into round number three as we get to our final round here. Though, um, though there's no damage to the body so much, Rico definitely took a, a cardio hit in that one, being stacked for a significant amount of time against the cage there. Uh, he was, like I was saying, being super honest on the bottom, trying to keep active, trying to get out of there, which is exhausting. You're not just fighting your opponent, you're fighting your opponent and gravity. Being crushed against uh, apparatus, being the cage, squished in two directions. It's very, very um, physically demanding of the bottom person in that situation. So we'll see that could play into the third round. Uh, let's see if the stand-up uh, has a little less spring coming into it, which may be the turning table for Sean Carroll. If he has more um, mobility and just sprightliness on the feet. And we're going to find out. We're coming into round number three now. Immediately, Carroll up on his feet, bouncing around. Rico, definitely game. Bringing the crowd into this. Everyone's happy for this fight. Great appreciative crowd. They know what they're looking at. The love for these fighters is real. And we're coming into round number three. Big hug from both fighters. And we are on to our final round in this three round fight. Close range being taken right by both fighters. They're both in striking range. Heavy right by Carroll, uh, followed up by a body kick. Again, heavy body kick. The range is being closed immediately. We're getting serious punishment now. Maybe an eye poke in Rico's corner. Referee's not separating it, so it's still live. We're hitting. We're going overhands. He's holding his eye. Probably having a hard time seeing out of that side. Really using the cage to rock against, play that rope-a-dope. Carroll is hunting him down. Definitely looking for those big combination finishes. Excuse me, he takes the double leg, turns him away, this time not with the cage on, but also in side control. So here we're back on the ground, both times being dictated by Sean Carroll. This time, though, is a different grappling situation because we don't have the cage involved, but we also don't have a guard involved yet, as Carroll tried to force the mount but ended up in half guard. This is the first part of defense from the ground for Rico. He needs to shrimp out and get his full guard going here, using a lockdown to stretch his opponent out, making it difficult to put forward pressure down. But Carroll's having none of it. Heavy uh, forearm pressure against the throat, really harassing his opponent, making him think about that while he frees his leg, getting up to a three-quarter mount, but being shrimped back to half guard and immediately back to that lockdown. 
Rico is really relying on that to keep this position um, going no further into more dominant situations, be it half guard, uh, side control, or mount. I'm curious to see what Rico has from this lockdown, though. There are lots of techniques you can use from there to try to sweep or elevate your opponent. His corner asking for exactly that, asking for a whip up, which is a move where you're going to extend his leg up into the air and try to bring him over for a sweep. Carroll just loving taking this uh, wind out of the sails of Rico from the top, arching up and landing heavy, heavy shots to the ribs. Even though you can't land to the body here in amateur MMA, he is doing some significant damage to the ribs. Those, those ones will hurt. As you can see, Rico is trying to return the favor, but it just doesn't have the same power from the bottom as it does from the top. Carroll trying desperately to circle his foot out of that, that lockdown, and Rico using it to come back to a full guard position. Now we're open into the cage. 10 seconds left. Big heavy shots now by Carroll as we're getting some Hail Mary submission attempts from Rico. He knows he has to do something. It's not going to be enough as we come to the end of the third round. Dominant performance by Carroll, but excellent tactical re-up at the end there by Rico. Doing everything he could from the bottom position. And uh, I'm curious to see if the doctor checks out this eye. He's still holding it. Yeah, you can see some bloodshot in that left eye. He definitely took a scrape or a, or a poke of some sort. That's unfortunate. I hope it's nothing permanent. Um, I don't know how much that played into the effect of the third round. He definitely um, got more passive on the feet after that and was covering up, uh, which may have allowed Carroll that entry into the double leg. But either way, it ended up on the ground, and uh, there's... Not a whole lot that a poke in the eye changes at that point. You can see Rico in the replay coming forward with those straight strikes. Carroll very loose, looking for those counter opportunities. Just like this, watching the strikes coming. He's not shelling up while they're coming. He's looking at them, dodging them just enough, and then returning. A lot of good counter-striking put on today by Sean Carroll. But also the aggressor in this. He wasn't waiting the whole time. He would come forward and land heavy shots. Had some good leg kicks to start this match off. Rico ended up on the ground and uh, unfortunately for his camp just didn't have the answer for Sean Carroll tonight. Good show of respect by both opponents, both fighters as they come to the center of the cage. We're going to get our official decision. Should be going the way of the hometown boy, Sean Carroll. We'll leave it to our announcer, Keith Crawford. A lot of respect inside this cage. Let's hear it for these two warriors. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard and we have a winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Sean Black Sheep Carroll. As expected, Sean Ladies Carroll takes the unanimous decision. Thank you, Red Deer, for the support. Uh, I just wanted to dedicate this win to my dad. Um, since day one, he supported me. I was always a bad kid, but he put me in martial arts and always believed in me. I love you, Dad. Thanks for coming out in all my fights. Congratulations, Mr. Carmichael. What a special moment for Sean, giving props to his dad. And he improves his amateur record to two wins, one loss, getting that 500 record 
behind him, back in the winning category. He's got a winning record. He's got to feel good as he dances his way out of the cage. For our sixth fight of the evening, we are still in the amateur part of this card, and also another catch weight, similar to the last one, but this time at 160, as we have Kevin Carmichael coming in for the blue corner. Presenting with home Zen Karate and kickboxing. Kevin Carmichael also has a very veteran voice and trainer in his corner in Guy Lafonce of Black Dragon. The gym's very well known for heavy striking. And coming out of the Zen Karate school, I bet that's what we're going to see tonight from Kevin Carmichael. Also in his corner is uh, Matthew Watson, TJJ Brown Belt. So he's got both uh, a very talented striker and grappler cornering him tonight, coming into this 160 amateur fight against his opponent, Chris Levia. Carmichael coming into rounds of applause. Definitely brought a big contingent out here. See if he can impress and really sh show his skills off tonight to all of his fans. As his opponent, Chris Levia, now makes the walk.
representing Kansai MMA. Chris Levia comes to the check station. Appears to be uh, at a height disadvantage in this fight, but maybe a little thicker in the torso. Both fighters coming from very good, well-known striking schools in the local scene. We could be in for uh, a good standing battle in this one. We have yet to see a single knockout on tonight's card, although we've had some great submissions and really some great striking back and forth. Let's see if that, uh, that trend gets broken this time in this 160 amateur bout. Both fighters have now taken the cage. A signal from each that they're gonna touch in the center. Just a reminder, this is an amateur bout, so we are in for three three-minute rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is three three-minute rounds and I have a catch weight of 160 pounds. And it's brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. The man in charge of the action when it starts inside the cage is Mr. Andy Social. And now, first, introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Lacombe, Alberta, representing Cheese Kickboxing. He stands 5'8. He weighs in at 160 pounds, and he is making his elevator debut. Ladies and gentlemen, build it! Carmichael! And his opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Kensai. He also stands 5'8. He went in at 160.4 pounds. He too is making his amateur debut. Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for Chris Avila. Kevin Carmichael and Chris Levia about to take the center of the cage in both of their first cage fights of their career. Squaring off and circling immediately. Range being checked by both. A little bit of a clash here right away. Levia ducking, landing a leg kick. And trying to stay out of the range, but being connected on by Carmichael. Right against the cage now. Circled out, did Levia. But being pushed back towards it, landing a knee, two knees. Carmichael coming in heavy with these shots. He wants to end this. Connecting on two hard straights. Levia trying hard to circle off the cage and he does. Carmichael pushing his opponent back towards it. Takedown attempt by Levia, stuffed by Carmichael, knee in return. And separated coming for big hooks. Heavy body kick caught by Carmichael. And tripped, but gotten back up, does Levia. Oh, big Uchimata takedown by Carmichael, ending up in a guard. Levia tying him up tightly in this situation. Does not want to allow his opponent to arch up and start landing or start passing. Let's see what Levia now has from the bottom as Carmichael is stuffing with heavy pressure, trying to keep his opponent's shoulders on the mat. Stepping over into half guard now is Carmichael. Heavy pressure now through the shoulder. Flattening out his opponent in the half guard. This is dangerous for Levia. He really needs to start getting some angles. Just to try to shrimp back to a more useful form of guard here. Oh, and as he tries to do that, he gets passed all the way to side control. Knee now being landed to the body by Carmichael. Levia trying hard to shrimp back and does get a half guard but being cross-faced heavily on top by Carmichael. Really wearing the weight of his opponent across his throat and chest, his hips being pinned. Carmichael's corner calling for their fighter to pull that leg through to get back to a side controller mount position. Levia trying hard to get back to a full guard of some sort. 
Now Carmichael stepping over the arm of Levia. That's a, a little bit of a mistake over committing in this half guard, giving his opponent an underhook. Although he is going for a key lock now on the far side, this could be dangerous if Levia is not checking it. And he does. He rolls towards the dangerous side, freeing his arm, but ending up in full mount. At the end of this round, we see Carmichael in full mount. Coming up high, working on an arm, turning for the arm bar. Oh, right at the bell. Saved by the bell is Levia as Carmichael turns for a uh, dead to rights arm bar. If nothing else, making a great statement to the judges to finish off round number one with a bang. Very heavy strikes being thrown in the opening round by Carmichael and landing a few of them that really wobbled his opponent for a split second. I thought there was going to be a, a knockdown situation started. Levia smartly trying to get off of the cage during these, circling away as he was getting pressured in. Shot for a takedown at one point being stuffed and as they clinched, ended up being reversed by an Uchimata. Carmichael quickly and savvily getting the uh, the hips controlled right here, you'll see as he turns his opponent towards the ground. Very, um, very uh, wily move. You don't see that one too often in MMA, but it really is a very good counter in that situation when somebody's trying to hit that single leg. Or in this case, it was a double leg. We're coming now into second round. Carmichael breathing heavily. Levia staring down his opponent. The cage has been locked. Round number two is underway. Oh, Superman punch by Carmichael. Forces his opponent back and tries to return with straight. Does Levia getting stuffed into the clinch now with knees and uppercuts. Big overhand right. Another overhand. Oh, a stumble ending up in a guillotine now. Levia has the neck of Carmichael. He is going all in on this, ending up in a half guard, but he does have the throat. Carmichael does need to be careful here. He's tucking his chin, working to break the grip now on that guillotine. And if he gets out, he has got Levia in a pretty decent position, pushed up in half guard against the cage. Levia leaning in on this. He must feel the throat. He's He's... Buying into it, he's biting down. Oh, and the head pops out. Levia now on the bottom, against the cage, in a half guard. Let's see if Carmichael tries to step out to get a more dominant control. Again, without strikes being allowed to the head on the ground here, it's all about grappling, all about wrestling. And that control being shown by Carmichael now, but getting regarded now by Levia into full guard. This is a, a useful guard in almost any situation except for when your head is smashed against the cage. It's really hard to use proper hip movement and, and arching when you're being crushed like this against the cage. Big body shots landed by Carmichael. Now the guard is open by Levia, turning for an arm bar, but it's not sunk in. Carmichael breaks that loose and comes now to side control. Big elbow pressure, forearm pressure down on the face and throat of Levia. Turning to a front headlock position now. Carmichael's heavy down on the chest, on the back of the head of Levia. He can turn this into either a back take attempt or a guillotine attempt of his own, but he definitely has the dominant position here until Levia can try to free himself of this front headlock. Sprawling down heavy now is Carmichael. He's really making Levia carry the weight. This is exhausting in this position. You can really get your will broken here the longer you stay there. Very hard on your neck and back. Not a whole lot of mobility or exit options for Levia. The longer that Carmichael holds him here, the better it'll be. Okay, now the, bri the grip is broken in that front headlock, although the sprawl is still in. We come back to the feet. We'll see if there's some knees. Overhands, lefts and rights against the cage. Being pressured in, heavy by Carmichael, not letting up for a second. Levia looked like he got hit pretty hard there. 
but still with it. We got a slugfest here at the end of round number two, coming into the center of the cage. Big overhands to the ear to Levia, the knee to the body, and the bell sounds to end round number two. Wow. The crowd is on their feet right now for these fighters. This really set up the whole second round, this guillotine attempt by Levia. He must have felt like he had something there to really buy in the way that he did, even from a half guard. Sometimes you can feel the soft part of the throat on your wrist or forearm, and you know that you have the ability to finish this choke. But you see the angle that Carmichael's really digging his shoulder in towards his opponent, turning his head away from the choke. It really saved him this position, allowed him to strip the grip, and then start that top control domination that we saw for the majority of round number two. Entering the final round. Time has been called by the referee. Referee Andy Social He's calling in the doctor to take a look at Livia's eye that was swollen up after round number two. Doctor doing his due diligence, making sure that the fighter is able to continue without the risk of permanent damage. Nobody wants to see that. The doctor's allowing it. We're gonna see a round number three. Great call by veteran referee Andy Social. But the fighters have been cleared and here we go, round number three. Coming forward right away is Levia. Carmichael landing heavy and backing his opponent up, pushing him against the cage. We're into a clinch brawl right now. Oh, big elbow landed, forearm strike by Carmichael. There must have been some urgency in the corner of Levia, but we have a TKO, a standing TKO. The referee has seen enough. The fighter was not intelligently defending himself. We have our technical knockout start of round number three for Kevin Carmichael. What a great display of martial prowess here in his first official amateur fight. Looked very, very good in there. Heavy strikes the whole time. And um, great dominant ground control as well. There was a couple big shots in that clinch situation that really turned the tide and put Levy on the back foot. One particularly was a forearm strike right to the face against the cage that, that uh, widened the eyes of Levy. You'll see here Carmichael lands a big overhand left, an uppercut, another overhand right. He's teeing off here at this point. Levy is backing up, trying to weather the storm, shelling, returning catching knees in the clinch. Here we'll see that big strike right there. And this is the beginning of the end for Chris Levy in this fight. Uppercuts, uppercuts, unanswered, undefended. The referee comes in to save the fighter 
from further unnecessary damage. We'll go to Keith Crawford for our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Andy Social steps in at 28 seconds of the third round and stops this fight and awards the winner a TKO due to unanswered blows for your winner, David Carmichael. Ladies and gentlemen, in our next fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Mike Parson. We are capping off our amateur portion of the card tonight with a 155 light pound amateur title fight. Mike Parsons will take the cage first against his opponent, Evan Piercy. Mike Parsons representing Team Extreme, who will be the second fighter of that team on the card tonight. Has in their corner uh, an Arashido fighter. Must be doing some cross training. Coming into the referee's check position. 
for this, our first title fight of the evening. Again, we do have two more title fights coming up in the pro section of the card. Another lightweight title fight, as well as a heavyweight one. But of those three title fights, this will be the first one of the night, the first one that could possibly go five rounds. Mike Parsons is all sorts of hype coming in here. Short, thick build for Parsons. The opponent tonight, Evan Piercy, fighting out of CMAC of Lethbridge, Alberta, has longtime veteran MMA fighter and coach Lee Main in his corner. Notably thinner, a little taller. Then his opponent, Mike Parsons, they show some respect as he circles the cage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this brings us to the first championship fight of the evening. Uh, this fight is five three minute rounds for the Havoc Amateur Lightweight Championship. And it is brought to you by Parkland, Sled, and ADB. Uh, the man in charge of this championship fight inside the cage is Mr. Luke Boutin. And now first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Brooks, Alberta, representing Team Extreme uh, MMA. He stands five foot seven. Uh, he went in at 154 pounds, has an amateur record of four wins, uh, two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mike and in the red corner fighting out of Lethbridge, Alberta representing Canadian Martial Arts Center he went in at 154.8 pounds he has an amateur record of 3 wins uh, 2 losses ladies and gentlemen that's here for Evan Piercy Parsons and Piercy slowly pacing the cage, ready for this possibly five round war. As referee Luke Bowden begins the action in round number one, they meet in the center to touch up. Piercy circling early. Parsons circling wide, checking a low kick, just missed. Faking shots right away, keeping his opponent guessing. Still figuring out the range now as Piercy as he pumps jab. Superman punch attempt by Parsons. Both just feeling each other out right now. Parsons being backed into the cage. He strikes might start landing for Piercy. Here they come, combos and Parsons jumps in on that single leg and runs him right across the cage, backs him into the corner and looks to finish on this hip control right now as he does, peeling him away from the cage. That was a lot of diesel in that takedown. He's staying heavy in the close guard now of Piercy as Piercy is landing heavy shots. Mike trying to pass the guard of Piercy. 
Landing in side control, cradle control, full side control. He's got an arm trapped underneath, tries to pass the mount. Piercy's not having it. Reframing, oh, the sweep by Piercy. Evan Piercy sweeping to the top against the cage now in half guard. Mike Pierce, sorry, Parsons, really trying to keep his back off the cage. Being cross-faced now by Piercy. Some space now being made. Piercy hammer fists. Trying to pass the open guard now of Parsons is Piercy. Parsons jumps on a leg. Trying desperately to set up possibly a heel hook attempt here in round number one. We're coming into the last 10 seconds though. Oh, heavy shots being landed by Piercy from that saddle position. Oh, covering up is Parsons here at the end of round number one. Just shelling up. We're being backed up into the cage. Piercy not letting off the pressure one bit. Parson is shelling up, covering up on the side. He's being hammer fisted on over and over. Big knee to the body and straight hand to the ear. Piercy is, he had finished it. He made the, the statement for himself. No response from Parsons long enough to let the ref jump in right the fading seconds of round number one. Wow, what a, what a power show at the end there. Just non-stop pressure and attack by Piercy. Forcing the referee's hand and winning him the amateur title lightweight Havoc Championship belt. Doctor checking out Mike Parsons, gives him the all clear and we will get to our official championship awarding. For your new amateur lightweight, 155 pound champion, Evan Piercy. Have a championship fighting. Let's hear it for these two warriors. Referee Luke Boutin steps in at two minutes, 59 seconds of the first round for your winner by TKO due to unanswered blues in the red corner, Evan Piercy. He is now the new Havoc Lightweight Champion. What a night for Evan Piercy winning his championship with literally one second left in round number one. But it might have been one second too long for his opponent, Mike Parsons, who is just taking unanswered punishment for the better part of a full minute. With that, we will end the amateur portion of our card. Coming into the professional MMA portion now with four pro fights two of which title fights here at Havoc FC.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, and our first professional fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Austin Petra. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle. It becomes the bottle. You put in a teapot. It becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend, my friend, my friend. Classic montage by Bruce Lee as our first professional fighter of the night makes the walk. Austin Batra will be in the blue corner tonight for this lightweight pro fight on the Havoc FC card. Dancing his way down. Coming in with some style. Remind the viewers at home, now in the professional portion of the card, we will be seeing five minute rounds as well as head kicks, elbows, strikes to the ground allowed. Things get a little more violent on the pro end. Referee doing final checks. As Austin Batra makes his way into the Havoc FC cage. opponent Sean Nawash now making his walk down towards the Havoc FC cage. Shadow boxing his way down the walk as he comes up to the referee check position. Nawash could be giving up a few inches to his opponent, Batra. See if that plays into the striking or grappling portion. Both fighters definitely look like they have to cut weight to make 155. They are significantly bigger than you would think for that. This is good. They're taking their fighting career seriously, making the weight. Ladies and gentlemen, this next professional fight is three. Fight 
five minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Lightweight Division. And this is brought to you by Brett Sutter Sports Medicine Center. And the man in charge of the action when it starts is the education's mister and the social. And now first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Abbotsford, British Columbia, ready, representing Beach Club Martial Arts and Team Mama. He stands by 11. He went in at 155 pounds even. He is making his professional debut. And this is gentlemen, give it up for Austin Petra. And in the red corner, fighting out of Calvary, Alberta, representing Cardinal to get to an MMA. He stands 5'10". He went in at 156 pounds. He is also making his pro debut. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Sean. Michael! And we are starting round number one in our first pro fight of the night. Both men, their first professional fight in MMA. Batra checking quickly with that Whoa, with that jab and into the leg kick. Very straight, long, fast punches from Batra. Trying to set up a guillotine to stuff the shot. We're circling back, pushing his opponent up against the cage. Oh, Michael's taking a heavy shot there. Big elbows in the standing position from Batra as he picks up the single and lets it go back to the strikes. This is a nonstop barrage. Batra has no speed that isn't 100%. He's hitting the gas hard in this first round, looking to finish it early. Getting checked with an uppercut by Michaels. And now Michaels back in the center of the cage, taking one twos. Spinning back fist attempt by Michaels. Botcher slowing it down a little bit now, inside leg kick, backing his opponent against the cage. Michael's looking to force it back into the open ground. Checking the range. These little feeler jabs. Looks like Botcher is trying to get his win back after that big opening. Took one right to the jaw. Oh, takes Michael down with a bit of a slip from that double leg. And he's landing quick, heavy barrages from the top position here in an open guard. Overhook from Michaels trying to stop this non-stop punching. Big elbows coming down from Batra. We're in open guard situation, going on an arm bar now. Not quite there, the elbow is out from the hips. Batra doing everything to try to back up from this position, you can see it on his face. He's sinking in deeper though. Slam now onto the head of Michaels. Batra still in danger. That arm might get extended here. He's bellying down on it. This is a deep arm bar. It's over. The referee has stopped it. The elbow was popped. What a tight arm bar. Andy Social, our referee, steps in to save our fighter's arm as it hyperextended. That's what it's for. That's why we practice. These things are no joke. They're meant to break the body, and break it, it did. Weathering an incredibly harsh storm right off the bat, did Michaels coming back in defense from the bottom with an offensive armbar, chasing it down, even being slammed in that position, but not letting go. His coach, Brad Cardinal, BJJ Black Belt, congratulating his fighter coming over to his opponent's corner to give him some respect. Just a great show of technical jujitsu against all odds being really hammered down in that first round by a super offensive Austin Batra. That's our first joint lock submission of the night. Fighters meeting in the center of the cage to show some respect. You can see here the slam in the replay. Missed the head of his opponent, kind of slammed him down on his shoulder, didn't do a whole lot of damage, but ended up sort of pushing his arm a little deeper into the hip zone here. Now you'll watch, the real damage comes when, when Michaels goes to belly down on this, so really put down gravity through his hips onto that elbow. 
And I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but definitely from my uh, commentator's position, you can see that elbow pop badly. Here's the position here. You can see the pop in the arm. Andy Social had seen enough. Referee stops for the safety of the fighter. We're going to get our official announcement from announcer Keith Crawford. seconds of the first round for your winner due to a verbal tap out with an arm bar Sean Michaels from the championship winning FTR 750 race bike, the new FTR 1200 is here. Flat track style and performance you can put in your garage from America's first motorcycle company. Get ready. Okay, draw it. Dun, dun, dun. The number is zero six five seven eight five four. Do we have a winner? Now do you want to know what you won? $2,733. Come on up here. Um, and this is for, again, Sylvan Lake Community Partners. It's a nonprofit social service that helps people in need. So thank you guys so much. You've helped tons of people in need tonight.
Give yourselves a hand. If you need to go to the washroom, now's the time. Run on out super fast. You have like a minute before we keep going. Okay, you actually have like two minutes, and in that time, you need to go check out the booths. So just a reminder, you've got Herx Nutrition at the front door. They've got games and prizes over there and awesome apparel. Um, Jacked over there as well. They also have great apparel. They're locally owned. Um, Home of Hope, uh, local nonprofit organization. They have Fight for a Child apparel and sponsor kits. Um, and Mortal Kombat Fight Shop in the back. Uh, they have a $400 gift basket and 10% off everything, and they are also locally owned. So get out, support local, check them out, and we're gonna keep going in a couple minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in the next final evening, please welcome to the blue corner, Harley King. After that short break, we're kicking the action back off with Harley King. This is going to be a 135-pound pro fight. His opponent is going to be a local black belt, Ryan Williams. Harley King representing Hayabusa Training Center under head coach Luke Harris. Very talented judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt as well as MMA veteran. This is the first and only bantamweight fight of the evening and will be our last fight before we get into our final two fights, which are title fights each. One thing's for sure, these smaller competitors really bring the action. Expect this to be a very fast paced battle at Bantamweight 135. His opponent, local man, Ryan Williams, coming in to represent ATC, Arashido Red Deer. Again, as previously mentioned, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, the first of which from Red Deer. Looking to come back after a hard loss in his last professional fight. It's been a while since that fight, and I'm sure he's looking to make a statement to wipe that, uh, that mark off of his career. The crowd coming up behind their hometown guy. Head coach Gary Big walking his fighter out to the check station. Williams saying one last prayer before stepping into the Havoc FC cage. Serious look in his face of determination. He is all in for this one, showing some respect to his opponent, Harley King. Five foot seven. He went in at 134.8 pounds. 
He is making his professional debut. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Harley King. And his opponent in the red corner, fighting out of Red Deer, Alberta, representing Arashido. He stands five foot eight. He went in at 134.2 pounds. He has a professional record of one win, one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Williams. Williams with the crowd behind him here. As the cage is locked and referee Luke Bowden will begin this bantamweight fight. Ryan quick to the center, throwing a high kick, checking with the jab. King playing it cautiously, coming forward with that lead leg wide, which is met by Williams' low kick, another high kick. Kick heavy in the first round here so far by Ryan Williams. Oh, big slap off that leg kick. Inside one goes low. Oh, this is not good. Very early in this fight to be taking a heavy shot to the groin. Although you can see that the uh, proper leg kicks are already showing red welts on the outside of the lead leg of King. This corner suggesting that his fighter takes some more time. That was a bad shot. You definitely don't want this to affect the fight if at all possible. So he has up to five minutes to try to recover from this. The referee telling Williams to watch those kicks. That'll be a warning. All right, Harley King saying he's good to go and they meet back in the center of the cage. Another outside kick by Williams. Ooh, side kick from Williams. More kicks than punches at this point, although he does land a jab and then a high kick. This could be the strategy. Kick low until he expects it low, then go high. King starting to plod forward, pushing a jab out there. Williams still heavy into that leg. That lead leg is taking significant damage inside and out. It is just turning cherry red. Looks like King is, is changing the levels here, trying to get a different look. Be curious to see if he turns this into a wrestling situation. Williams very light on his feet here, pushing jabs out there. Oh, big hook. Catches the kick, does Williams. Goes in, gets reversed against the cage, but gets back to his feet. He's now pushing King against the cage. Head right under the chin, good head placement. Pressuring his opponent up. King using that leg to check for the takedown. We've got a body lock still here by Williams, trying to bend his opponent down towards the ground, finding his hips, catching some elbows for his troubles. Being lifted up. Now Williams has it down to the ground. Heavy pressure, trying not to give his back as he comes up towards the cage. King uses that cage to wall walk back to a safe position. The overhook really helping in this position for King to not get his back taken. If that isn't there, you can be sure that Williams wants to get to that back as soon as possible. Stomps now from Williams in the corner. That head positioning still causing uh, havoc up on Williams. I'm sorry, King's posture, although William is now leaking out of the side of his head from those elbows, he definitely took some damage. We'll see if King starts coming back to that. This is something that played into the uh, previous loss that Ryan Williams had was elbows to the head. We'll see if that uh, gets into the mindset here now. If he starts turning it up or turning it down due to that. Really trying to get under the hips of his opponent is Williams. This is a lot of work. Double underhook saves that position for King. Catches an uh, uppercut on the break. Williams checking the blood. But he's back to the center. Throwing heavy leather. 
Another big pump jab. Inside leg kick. Now King's trying to return those kicks but getting attacked up top. Overhand by Williams. 2-3 combo. Trying to catch the kick as Williams pushing it back into the cage. Going again to those hips but getting double underhooked again. Williams really pushing against the cage. King trying to reverse that position as best he can. Oh, bit of a knee here in the clinch. Deep on that single again is Williams. Here come those elbow strikes again. Those worked well for King previously. It's to the same side of the head too. Okay, King has managed to circle around. Almost looks like he caught another low blow there to a, with a knee. Yep, he did. He's going to get separated again. This could end up getting a point deducted. We'll see what the referee does here. Two in one round. Obviously, neither of those intentional, but the referee does have to make a decision. See the blood running down the head of Williams as he rests in his corner, waiting for the decision from the ref. And we're restarting back. I'm not sure if that was a point taken away or not. If it was, there's a possibility for a draw round. Although King's starting to make a statement for himself, coming in heavy with the strikes, pushing Williams up against the cage and coming in thick on the body. Palm strikes being returned by Williams. Oh, big overhand elbow for King. That stunned him. Oh, big return head kick from Williams. Damage coming in from that hook. King may have stunned Williams near the end of the round here. We heard the clacks. Big heavy elbows from half guard. Williams doing everything he can to survive and he does. Wow, that round really turned around after that uh, last separation for the late knee to the groin. Before that, it was all Williams. At least he was the, uh, the one in the dominant position primarily. And then once they re-upped in the center after that rest, boy, King came in heavy. Big jumping, flying attacks, pushing him into the cage, ending up taking it down after a failed shot by Williams to, to stifle those blows. Wound up being reversed down to the bottom side control, I'm sorry, uh, half guard position and catching just heavy elbows, bouncing his head off the ground. We'll see how much Williams comes back in this second round cognitively because he was uh, being rattled badly at the end there. I don't know if a minute's enough. We'll find out. You see lots of work on the replay being done by Williams. Both men put a lot of effort into that first round, but I'd say the damage advantage definitely has to go to King. Here we go, round two. Williams comes out quick, takes the center. Some urgency in the face of Williams. King plodding in. Catching more leg kicks. He's starting to check really high for those. He doesn't like catching them in the quad. Those are swelling up for sure. Little jab. Oh, big uppercut coming for King. Williams uses that to get the body lock, and we're back against the cage. Underhooks now being forced by King, and we've circled back. Now King has the pressure pushing on Williams. See if he uses this to break or to use it for a takedown. Oh, he attempts a spinning back elbow. That, that was a good move. Just narrowly missing Williams. Williams takes the center, another body kick. Exchanging jabs. More leg kicks. Williams punching that, pushing that jab. Connects on King. Oh, rage being found by both opponents as they're landing to the head over and over. 
I don't know if that was a slip or a connection, but we've got a single leg attempt by Williams taking more elbows by King. Up against the cage in front of my commentary position. Williams trying hard to break down the posture of King. Pressuring now is Williams pushing Kings back against the cage. And reversed by King. Oh, big knee to the head of Williams. That was a massive knee. Hammer fists now in that single leg position. Lots of damage being landed by King. The referees being very careful to watch this to make sure that Williams is still in it. Cross face now. Williams is definitely still in it. He's given it everything he's got here, going to wrist control. Stomping the feet. Trying to connect his hands to finish this takedown. The underhook is saving King from being able to be taken down here. Oh, but changing the angle does Ryan. And Williams now has the top and close guard. He's worked hard to get here. Let's see what he can do. King is trying hard to get his feet to the hips of Williams where he can elevate and separate. And he does, but gets taken back down. And now Williams has a bit of a body lock situation here. The referee is stopping it for a mouthpiece. And resuming the fight. Pushing heavy now as Williams into the, the hips of King. King's back to his feet using that wall walk. Took an elbow to the face, but is now in a better position to defend himself. Using that underhook, trying to turn it again as he has in the past. Williams going down low to the feet now to try to find maybe an ankle pick to trip this down to the ground. Oh, giant knee to Williams. That might have uh, rocked him badly there. I thought he was out for a second, but he's not. My goodness, he's taken two gigantic knees when he's going for those, those low singles. Lots of hammer fists here. Oh, non-stop damage. The referee is taking a close look at this in round number two. Unanswered blows being landed by King. Big elbows. This could be the end of it. Williams shelling up from here, defending those blows as best he can. Using his guard. Missed that big elbow, that could have been a big one. Those punches are starting to break through. Williams turning away, he's tapping. That's a tap to strikes. What a horrendous beat down at the end of round number two. The referee saw enough um, defense not to stop it, but Williams had had enough especially from those two gigantic knees earlier in the fights. That was a, probably a veteran move there to save his brain. That is a lot of damage he is being taken. Unanswered elbows over and over and over from the half guard. Great performance in the second round here by Harley King. The doctor is checking out Williams as he gets back up. And that will be our second TKO of the evening here at Havoc FC. By way of Harley King in round number two. This bantamweight fight has come to an end and we will get our official announcement in a moment. Looking at this replay, you can see Williams was coming in very well with the striking, but would catch every now and again, catch a heavy blow that would cause him to uh, force that takedown. And this is where the fight really changed is in these takedown exchanges as Williams tried desperately to get it to the ground successfully from time to time, but would take damage every time he did. And that piled up to the point at the end there where it just the takedown wasn't happening and the damage was getting too much that he would uh, eventually have to tap out due to blows. Look at these heavy, heavy shots. These are not nothing shots. These count. That is really rocking. And that was the end right there. 
actually, that was the end of round number one. Wow, yeah, he took damage uh, in both of those rounds significantly. The crowd cheering now as Williams comes to his feet. But you can see from this replay over and over, hammer fist, elbows, hammer fist, elbows. Big knees that dropped Williams twice in this fight. And there's the tap out in the replay. Here we'll get our official announcement of the winner from Keith Crawford. Ladies and gentlemen, these are warriors inside this cage. Let's hear it for them one more time. Referee Luke Moutier steps in at four minutes in the second round and stops this fight and awards a TKO due to unanswered blows for the winner in the blue corner, Harley King. Born from the championship winning FTR 750 race bike, the new FTR 1200 is here. Flat track style and performance you can put in your garage. From America's first motorcycle company. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the next fight of the evening, please welcome in the blue corner, Corey Gower.
Corey Gower now takes his place in the cage for this five round title fight for the 155 pound lightweight belt and Havoc fighting championship. His opponent will be veteran fighter Craig Shintani. It should make for a uh, seriously good Komei event here tonight. And in the red corner, Craig Shintani! Both these men well known in the local scene. for dominant performances. It's a no-brainer that they're fighting for a title tonight. Shintani makes his walk down. Into the referee check position. Although Shintani will be giving up a bit of height in this match, he is uh, well known for spectacular wrestling and takedown ability, where height doesn't really matter when you can close the distance. Let's see if that is the game plan tonight here at Havoc FC. Both fighters have entered the cage. The belt now for the 155 pound division being walked around. This is up for grabs tonight between these two warriors. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the co minimum of the evening. Uh, this is a title fight and contested over five five minute rounds for the Havoc Lightweight Championship. And it is brought to you by Goliath Snubbing. The man in charge of this championship fight inside the cage is Mr. Andy Social. And now first, introducing fighting out of the blue corner, representing Duncan, British Columbia, and Zuchek, Ultimate Martial Arts. He stands five foot 10. He went in at 154 pounds. He has a professional record of seven wins, six losses. He is the reigning Havoc Bantamweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Gower! And in the red corner, fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, representing Kingdom MMA. He stands five foot nine. He weighed in at 153.8 pounds, has a professional record of eight wins, three losses. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Craig Shinjani! Times. Fight hard, fight fair, touch him up. With those final commands from referee Andy Social, the cage is beginning to be locked and we are gonna start round one of this five round battle for the lightweight championship of Havoc FC. We touch up in the center and immediately Craig Shintani is pushing the pace back towards the cage. Long range right now for Gower. Staying long and circling wide. Shintani pumping and going immediately to that wrestling. Settling down in the half guard. Flattening his opponent's shoulders against the mat where he can start passing and doing damage. You'll see a heavy shoulder pressure from Shintani to isolate the top body while he tries to free the lower body. Overhooks being utilized by Gower to try to stifle any sort of attack. He has to be careful. Elbows, hammer fists can be very devastating from half guard. 
Shitani still pinning the hips, although starting to be framed against now by Gower. Those forearm frames from Gower are gonna open up space and allow him to get to a more offensive or defensive guard position than his half guard. Now in three quarter mount is Shintani starting to land and he goes to full mount. Gower is, he's covering up, turning the back. Shintani has the back with both hooks, belly down. Shintani's a little high in this mount. Gower's gonna look to try to buck him off the top but Shintani turns it over. Very good move, looking to land some damage and definitely after that neck. Gower doing everything he can to defend those strikes. But he has to be very conscious of this choke. The choke is now set. Shintani is going in on this. That's the tap. Round one finish for Craig Shintani. What a statement. Taking the belt tonight in the lightweight division in less than a round. Fantastic performance. Improving his record to 10 wins now for a lightweight championship at Havoc FC. Well done, Craig Shintani. For your winner and new Havoc Lightweight Champion, Craig Shintani. Masterful performance tonight by Craig Shintani, your new lightweight champion at Havoc FC. Getting it done in under two minutes. There wasn't a whole lot of striking involved before he shot in on that uh, double, taking it to the ground, and just technical jujitsu, one step at a time, moving up through the positional chain, starting from half guard, getting to three quarter mount, full mount, turning the back of his opponent, and then just working those grips, starting to land some strikes until he found that that choke, and once he got it, it was over quick. That short choke, forearm choke, there's not a whole lot you can do when that's in. And that has punched his ticket into the championship realm. Speaking of which, 
We have our main event coming up in the heavyweight division. Five round title fight between Grayson Wells and Devin Neese. Talk about power punches, this is going to be dynamite. I don't know how this fight's gonna go down, but I would be shocked if someone does not lose their consciousness in under five rounds. These boys fire for the bleachers. As one champion will make his walk down. Two more fighters will come up to determine the next champion. No stranger to the heavyweight division around these parts, Grayson Wells, the first to make the walk into the Havoc FC cage for our main event in the heavyweight division. Definitely got a large contingent in the crowd for Mr. Wells, who's pulling up to the check station now. This will be again a five round, five minute round title fight for a vacant Havoc FC heavyweight championship. Grayson Wells making his way into the cage. He will be in the blue corner tonight, pacing around, feeling the war territory, where the battle is about to go down. And in the red corner, Devin Mee! His opponent, Devin Neese, needs no introduction around these parts. A lot of the crowd is out here to see him go for this belt tonight. He's been in this game for over a decade. People are already on their feet, putting a lot of energy behind their guy. Neese makes his walk down towards the cage. Being cornered by Black Dragon Head, Guy Lafontaine. Devin throws heavy, heavy, heavy hands. Do not blink in this fight. We have 25 minutes for one of these men to connect, and that is all it will take.
Here we go, final fighter entering the cage. In our main event, circling the cage, showing some respect to his opponent, Grayson Wells. The words, good night, tattooed across his chest. No doubt what he's looking for. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. This fight is five five-minute rounds in the Havoc Fighting Championship Heavyweight Division and is brought to you by Fire and Flood Emergency Services. The man in charge of this main event tonight is Mr. Luke Boutin. And now first, introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Kelowna, British Columbia, representing Toshino MMA. He stands six foot three. He weighed in at 224.4 pounds. He has a professional record of four wins, three losses. And ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Grayson Back, listen to my commands at all times, touch gloves, head back to your corners. Good luck. Final instructions from referee Luke Bowden. We are about to begin our main event at Havoc FC. Grayson Wells against Devin Neese for the heavyweight championship. Love touching the center. Wells backs up. Neese starts plodding forward. Circling as Wells. Big leg kick caught by Wells, immediately down to the ground by Nice. Nice on his back, throwing elbows. Trying to get a high guard now is Nice. Forcing the half guard as Wells, starting to land hammer fists. Nice trying to tie up the arms of Wells. These shots are starting to get through from the closed guard. Grayson driving the head into the chin of Nice, pressuring forward in this close guard that is now open. He backs up, throws the legs aside, and gets to the turtle position. Nice does a great job inverting, but still ends up with Wells on his back. Turtle has one hook in now. Wells is looking to get this back position, starting to land short uppercuts. Oh, being turned in this position, he may lose it if he isn't careful. Posting on that right arm is saving this position right now. If Nice were to pull that out, he could turn towards him and he just misses it. Manages to get that arm and scrambles back to the feet. Does Nice? Knees landed, we're in the clinch. Big elbows. We're slugging early here. Oh, big connection from Nice. Wells wore that on his chin. Grayson goes in for a uh, slow double leg. He's a bit stunned right now by the looks of it. Felt the power of Nice now. Starting to back up. Oh, heavy shot landed by Wells, but an eye poke in the meantime. Whoa. What an exchange. This is not good for Grayson Wells. Oddly advantageous for Devin Neese, who took a big shot at the same time and is allowed to rest at this point. The doctor is checking out the eye of Wells. Bleeding all over and writhing in pain. This is not looking good. Doctors looking at the cut that has opened up over the eyelid, the left eyelid of Grayson Wells. Does not appear to be leaking into the eye, but it is a good inch and a half long cut. Checking the vision now. A 
I'm not sure what exactly made that cut, if it was a, a poke or if it was the edge of the glove. There was some sort of connection there that caused it. There's, it's uh, unclear right now if there was uh, illegal technique or movement. It looks like the doctor is taking another look at it. He's allowing the fighter up to his feet. And he's going to allow it to continue. One point is being deducted from the corner of Devin Nice. It must have been an illegal technique. I'm guessing a finger poke. But this fight is continuing in round number one. They meet in the center. Again, circling back as well. Big overhand into the chin of Nice. Doubles up on that and ends up in an open guard, half guard situation. Wow, what a, what a start. What a restart to that round. Pinpoint accuracy. Grayson now looking to leave heavy pressure down while Nice is trying to grind away at that cut, using his forearms to try to grind it open. A key lock attempt now from Wells. Oh, big punches being landed here, bouncing the head of Nice off the ground over and over. More key lock attempts now from Wells. Trying to pin that wrist to the ground so he can get the shoulder lock. Nice doing everything he can to try to keep his posture. Try to get out of this situation. Half guard is not the spot you want to be in the middle of the cage against a heavyweight. More punches being landed. Those are all landing on Devin. Nice is overhooking the arm, trying to keep the striking uh, position out of the situation, turtling up, that's better. He's trying to stop those blows that were landing over and over from before. Again, just pushing the face away, grinding that forearm towards the eye that's cut open. Corner of Wells calling for Kimura's. Elbows to the legs now. You can see that Grayson is still leaking from that eye, but pulls it all the way to full mount and starts landing. Unanswered blows from the mount. Big shots landing down for Grayson Wells. This could be it. The referee steps in. We have a new champion, a new heavyweight champion for Havoc FC, Grayson Wells. What a come from behind win after a crazy start with that big cut. We weren't sure if this fight was even going to continue. He weathered the storm, came back with high accuracy punches to get it back to the ground. Worked his way patiently, landing heavy shots from half guard, forcing the mount, and then just dominant control, dominant strikes coming down to force the referee to stop this in the first round. Here we'll go to the replay. You see that big right hand that wobbled Nice, but at the same time there was that eye poke that opened up the cut over Grayson Wells' eye. Let's go guys. Come on guys. A very interesting turn of events that could have um, could have changed the outcome here. Where the doctor not so sure about the restart, but we sure are glad he did decide to let Grayson continue as it led him to his championship here tonight. You'll see that takedown into the half guard, landing big shots, elbows, punches, nonstop. Those were landing probably 90% accuracy over and over and over. Through this pressure and striking, he was able to force his way past this half guard. Boom, boom, landing strike after strike. 
grinding the forearm into the throat of Nice. Nice doing everything he can to try to stop these blows, but it was just non-stop. Submission attempts here from Wells as well. And there we see the finish here coming from full mount, just over and over, big punches, giant elbows. Nice doing everything he can to stop it, but the referee had seen enough as his head keeps getting just bounced off the canvas. can see from some of these angles on Devin Neese's head, the hematoma on the left forehead really starting to balloon up. This is what happens when you get two heavyweights in the cage, less than one round. One is bleeding, the other's swollen. A lot of power coming down in any of these strikes. Good show of respect now from the competitors. And they will meet the center of the cage for our official championship announcement from announcer Keith Crawford. Ladies and gentlemen, to the heavyweight One more time! <laughs> Referee Luke Boutier steps in at three minutes, 45 seconds of the first round for your winner due to TKO. Jason Wells! On behalf of Havoc Fighting Championship, thank you very much for coming tonight. We appreciate your business. Drive safely. We will see you next time.